Today's episode, we cover part one of our sixth edition Empire Army Book Review. Let's roll some dice. Welcome, welcome to the Old World Fanatics. We're up to episode six now, guys. So this is uh, everyone's Warhammer Fantasy podcast to quench your hobby thirst for all things the Old World. And I'm back with, uh, I'm sorry, I'm your host, Gomo, and I'm back with Andrew and Josh, as I said, on episode six. So how is everyone tonight? Yeah, good, thanks, Gomo. Not doing too badly at the moment, Gomo. That's good. Uh, that's good. I'm, I'm uh, fumbling my words at the moment. I think it's a bit late already. So it's a nice <laughs> late recording time on a Monday. You'd think I'd be all refreshed for the week. But how, how you guys' uh, weekends go? Hobbying or other stuff? Uh, other stuff, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Life. <laughs> Life, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not much hobby going on this week. Yeah. It, the weather is, I don't know what. The weather up here is good. I don't know about you, Josh, but have you guys guys getting that heat wave as well? I mean, heat wave in inverted commas, but it's been pleasant. Yeah, yeah I guess you would call yeah. a heat wave when it's low to mid twenties. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> slightly warmer than normal. In oh, we've had. Uh, I think we're pushing five days of thirty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, warm. right. Yeah, so that means to me, it's generally outside doing gardening. So that was my weekend. Mm. So, oh, and then, yeah, we can get into it a hobby time. I was doing some interesting stuff on Saturday night, which we'll get to. Um, yeah. But, yeah, what do we got on today? So just I guess I'll intro the the episode. We're going to attack the uh, our first army book review, guys. So <laughs> I've tried. Yeah, we'll try. We've never done <laughs> one. <laughs> I think one of the quotes just before was, um, does anyone know much about Laura? And we went, mm, no. Nah. But anyway, we'll... Um, We'll fumble through it <laughs> as much as we can. Hopefully people will still find it entertaining. Um, but, yeah, that's going to be the bulk of our episode. But um, I guess law and some of the other parts of Empire oh, – sorry, it's the Empire Army book, I guess we should talk through that. And specifically 6th edition, I guess, is what we're focused on. Yep. Um, at least in terms of the gameplay stuff, we might have a little bit of comparison and chats and law stuff from other editions and things. But, yeah primarily 6th edition Empire Army book. So hopefully people enjoy that. Um, and I think without getting too far ahead that it might end up being a two-parter. So we haven't actually recorded, obviously we're recording this now and we haven't actually planned out how long it's going to go for, but we're thinking it might just be the next two episodes. And if that is the case, then um, obviously you'll find out when you get to the end of this episode and it's only halfway through. So <laughs> <laughs> hopefully we've got enough content to talk through. Yeah. Anyway, guys, do we want to um, chat a, a little bit of hobby? It sounds like we didn't get a lot done because we only meet every week, so it's pretty. Uh, you don't get a lot done in that time. Did anyone do anything interesting? Um, yeah. So obviously, with um, Josh's upcoming um, event, I'll let him obviously talk about that again. Um, uh, I've been putting together um, just to do a. A bit of a a follow along, uh, out of state follow along, um, putting together a few units. So I've been throwing together some Chaos Dwarves, uh, some Blunderbusses, well, the Forge World equivalents, which are uh, Fire Glaives, but I'll be proxying them as Blunderbusses because they don't have them. Um, so yeah, I've been throwing those together and basically trying to sort out. Um, how I'm going to go with the army. Um, obviously, most people probably know um, Chaos Dwarves um, don't have their own army book. Um, so they've got like the Ravening Hordes. Ravening Hordes, is it? Yeah, yeah. supplement, um, which it's decent, but it's still quite limited, um, especially in the core region. Um, it's just sort of that, that sort of throw me off a bit. So basically, you can only have the Chaos Dwarves stock standard or um with the blunderbusses um and then you can have the hobgoblins but they don't count as core um mm. so i'm just trying to work out how to do that and that dynamic. it's like the best core ever hey it's like it's, yeah, yeah you try to fill, fill up your core with core but it doesn't count yeah yeah basically <laughs> <laughs> um but other than the core yeah it's actually it, it's some pretty decent stuff but yeah that's kind of where i'm at so i i don't i know nothing about it. the only chaos dwarves i remember uh from fourth edition or fifth edition it was all the colorful book and they had the lamassus and the yeah yeah something. are they in yep. sixth edition okay okay cool but did they ever 
They brought it was a they did a big Forge World did one of those big ones, didn't it, for eighth. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Sent something. Right. Yeah, okay. So all that's still Okay. So that's all in this ravening hordes thing. Uh yeah, but not not for the Forge World uh, uh range. Okay. So this is right. prior. So this yeah. is kind of like for the older the older range. Yeah, um, okay. But yeah, it's just, just a but, bit limited with magic weapons and whatnot. Okay. But you can still use the Forge World models, like it lines up okay with the... Yep, yep. Um, um, just no, Yeah, it's mainly like the Forge World models, there was a lot, a lot of war machines and special units that just aren't there. Um, and obviously, Josh, as we spoke about, um, Forge World don't do the bull centaurs. Um, they do like the, the larger versions. Mm. So I'll have to find a, a 3D printed proxy probably for there's those. probably a i would yeah. imagine there's a fair bit of chaos or they seem like one of the um is that probably well, one of the first that were getting 3d resin prints and stuff because yeah just, yeah games workshop never supported them really yeah. yeah there's quite a few it's just trying to find you, you know you're trying to find like a similar theme like a similar yeah. look so yeah. Mm, yeah it's all yep. about trying to keep that aesthetic yep yep yeah man you must have some massive storage of miniatures because like we talked about like this slow grow which i guess josh can you know i just said uh introduce the listeners again too but like you just go yeah I'll get, pull out these chaos dwarves you're pulling out forge world packs of forge world and stuff like did you just buy yeah. all this stuff years ago or before i had so? kids i just went a bit oh, silly okay. um, <laughs> and bought stupid amounts of armies that's when i had time and i could actually yeah. paint and i'm just like yeah. had all these projects on the go and then life kicked in and I've sort of been moving quite a few on, um, but I've still got quite a few yeah. <laughs> boxes and boxes of things. Good person to know. I like it. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Joe, I mean, we'd, yeah, well, obviously I, Andrew talked about this slow grow. Do you want to yeah. talk through that again? Cause, well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, yeah, I probably spent – I haven't really done much hobby this last week, probably because I was a bit preoccupied – um, putting it together, I suppose, getting because mm. a play, a little doing little plays pack and that type of thing, you know, editing editing up to a standard, I, you know, that I was happy with. It sort of did actually take a while, yeah, <laughs> a well, bit more than good. I thought. It would yeah, be. Um, yeah. Uh, thanks, uh, but uh, yeah, it's something that well, I ended up arranging it since last week, where I've you know contacted the hosts and and worked out a, a day and ended up having the 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 first date would be on the twelfth of November. Um, at House of War in Ringwood, um, which is a Sunday. It's sort of trying to do it like a 10 a.m., you know, into the afternoon Sunday thing. Yeah. Um, more often than not. Um, uh, starting with like just I went 400 points for the first one um, using the the war bands rules. Yeah. yeah. Which is just a rule set that it gives you the ability to just take very small units of individual guys. Um, uh, but it's also got a little, a nice little scenario in there that. It sort of lets you sort of randomize the deployment. So you've got like a few different types of deployments where there'd be like, rather than having it one opposite each other, you've got like three or four different squares ac- across the board or that type of thing, um, or maybe a diagonal one. Uh, and then some of the objectives are like, I think you just roll like a D6 and, the, and you've got like three or four different sort of hidden objectives that you're trying to get to. So it sort of makes it the really small armies uh, battles uh, a little bit more interesting, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so we're doing that for the first round and then 200 points every sort of four to six weeks or so. I ended up having to do four week break between the first and second because any longer than that, I mean, it would have been really near Christmas. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah, the second yeah. one would be like 10th of December and then 14th of January. Um, uh, yeah, I was hoping to do early early October for the first one to give a bit more of a space between that and the second, but yeah, we couldn't do it any earlier. Um, uh, but yeah, Christmas, you're just going to avoid it as much as you yeah, can, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's fair enough. Yeah. So have you played there and stuff? Is that where you've played before? Yeah, yeah, yeah I've yeah, played a few yeah. times there. Um, it's a pretty well-known hobby store. In Eastern Melbourne, yeah, um, uh, with yeah, quite a large area upstairs for for gaming, and, and it regularly hosts tournaments of 40k and Lord yeah, of the cool. Rings and that type of thing. Um, uh, but yeah, it's, it's how it's do nice um, how do you think people like me and Andrew hanging off as remotes? Um, we obviously just do it on the podcast, or can we generate some points or anything? Or is that just I can absolutely generate points. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, I mean, it's yeah. I don't want to geographically lo- uh, localize the the thing. I limit, I suppose, the thing. It's um, any, anyone can can, li- <laughs> can yeah. enlist if they want. <laughs> it's yeah. got to play the games, guys. You got to get the game in every yeah. every four four or six weeks. Yeah. yeah. No, nah, well, I mean, the game will be easy. Probably me and Andrew potentially, but uh, yeah, yeah. Other people a bit hard if they're in Melbourne, but. No, that's no, okay. Um, yeah, but hmm. if you ended up getting other people in Newcastle going, that would yeah, be yeah, true. hilarious and awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Do a mirror slow grow. The, yeah, yeah. The, the winning prize can be um, a flight to Melbourne to actually play the, the final. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be that competitive. No, I no, mean, yeah, no, I'm no, going to be so. printing off some, some little bits of scenery here and there. Um, a little bit of pri- little surprises here, you know, that I just want to. I think it'd be fun to do that kind of thing. Yeah, um, yeah. but it's not going to be really competitive. I don't think whoever wins is sort of like, you know. I just think they work really well, don't they? Just to help you, um, like even if you don't end up playing the games and stuff, like, like it, I'm se- selfishly, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it because now I've seemingly got three armies on the go now. I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> there, but um, <laughs> the, I want to because I've got my 40k orcs. I'm like. Ah, well, I only need to do 400 points. Maybe I'll paint, paint them as well. Like just like keep that same cadence yeah. up. You know what I mean? Well, you yeah. totally yeah. could. Like you know. I, it's certainly yeah. not a, a, a high um, a level Tem- of uh, – No. Yeah, yeah, a high temper, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's um, – I like your – So you could probably do two armies at once. Leisurely, wasn't it? Is Leisurely, it? that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. So yeah. I don't know. I'll, just, I'll see how I go. But I tried. Um, I tried to make it easy to to sign up to because you, yeah, you, you kind of want to. Some people might go. Oh, look, I don't want to dedicate myself to painting only yeah, Sami yeah. for the next six months. But if you can sort of do it as a side project, you know, it's. I think I feel like at that pace, it's entirely doable. Yeah. Um, oh, totally. You could do. Yeah. And you know, I've had yeah a reasonable amount. I think I've had like eight people sign up. You know, with mm. a good a good different range of um lists. You know, yeah. and things that I've not really encountered before personally. Like I've never played against like Cult of Ulrich list yeah, um, yeah. before. Or the Red Host of Tenunum from the Lustrian Supplement. I yeah. had to go yeah. I had to go and find that. I was like, what Red Host? What is this <laughs> thing yeah. this guy's? So it's like got ranked up skinks in infantry mm. blocks and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's uh, cool. I mean, yeah, the, and Lizard. I mean, they probably have a lot of cool figures to draw from potentially as well with the AOS update and stuff and the war bands, uh, war cry skinks, yeah. I think. So, yeah. We'll see. A few. Yeah. If they fit on the bases, I guess. Yeah, true. Yeah. 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 What have you been up to, Colin? You've been pretty busy? Um, yeah. I mean, I I have been trying to paint just that little block of – I got. I don't, did I get those horse – Archers done my Tomb King when I was trying to dry brushes. I can't remember last week. I was trying to dry brush with my new dry brushes for the horse archers, Tomb King horse mm, archers. I think I you said you were trying Was I in the yeah, middle yeah. of it? Yeah, well, yeah. Anyway, I finished them. Yeah, so I did finish them. I just can't remember if I finished them last week or this week. But um, finished them and I'm just getting through this little small unit of 10 crossbowers that I had in my Avalon theme. Try- That's what I was talking about last week, just sort of testing out the contrast paints to match with my – existing empire and that was sort of partly you know when we decided to do empire army book review i was looking through stuff and you know interestingly we'll get on to this but like i didn't use detachments in eighth and so like i don't really have any different i don't have any missile troops painted so i started with the crossbow guys and i've got obviously a crap ton of handgunners so i'll probably just get at least a few batches of 10 done just so I can play around with different detachment sizes. Yeah. So that's sort did of you, one army on the go, but I don't have them Did done. you not use detachments in eighth? No, this is eight. not. I mean, I think I might have once or twice, but in general, no. Which is really, that's which we can get through in the gameplay thing. But even, <laughs> yeah, the, I guess. even the net listing ones, I found people weren't so doing that. So it's such a yeah. central part of how the army is supposed to work. I just think... Could you not? I can't remember what the eighth rule was. Was it still too hard to break steadfast? Yeah. Like, I don't know. I don't, yeah, that's maybe. one point I was going to look at because I was like, hang mm. on, why Why didn't I see a lot of this, you know? Um, yep. But anyway, uh, yeah, so I need to do that. And then obviously um, until I get, and I'm, I'm get, you know, at some point when I get some, you know, 
swordsman and, and great swords. Not not trying to rush you, Josh, or anything. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> if I get some great sword models get or whatever, I'll obviously have to paint them as well. But uh, I've printed until... them. Oh, wow. Oh, really? Sitting. I've Jesus. sort of left them curing oh. at the moment, but they're oh, all God. done. Okay. Oh, oh wow. How come, how come you didn't put that in your hobby update? <laughs> Good point. <laughs> I probably should have. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. Well, I will. Jeez. Okay. If I want yeah. to paint, when I get yeah, them, I've been printing paint them a bunch then. of stuff. Yeah. We'll have to arrange just, transfer. Just, I'm just letting them sort through. of. Yeah. Yeah. You see, I was printing them and I've been printing off for the slow grow. I've thought <clears> of <throat> maybe doing some Kelta Slanesh type guys. Yeah. Yeah. And so I've been printing off some of those, that, that gear as well. Yeah. Printing is very easy. You get, then you got to sit down and paint it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, so then, obviously, this came up—the slow grow—and then I was umming and ahhing, and I was because, to be honest, one of the things I was thinking before I chose wood elves, which is what I'll do, is um, doing empire, but like maybe a different province. You know, just start a whole new batch of empire. Oh, yeah. You know, that's one thing I was thinking of doing, but then I went, ah. Oh, Nah, maybe I don't know. It feels like not knowing what old world's going to be like. I think once old world comes out, I would imagine that Tomb Kings, Empire, and Orc and Goblins are probably going to be the ones that I will focus on. And yeah. Orcs and Empire might be ones that I, if they get new figures, I want to do them yeah. as old world ones. You know, so my Wood Elves, and then obviously you guys made the point where I had a fair bit of Wood Elves, and I was like, well, why don't I actually use them? So, um, and then Saturday, but I didn't. I couldn't remember how much I had of all that. And then so Saturday night, I started. My wife was at um, a ladies' race day at the horse races, so she was gone to like. I picked her up at I don't know eleven o'clock or something at night. So I was just at home, and I was just pulled every like my um yeah. I've got like next to me on my desk here. I've got like drawers which just have like you know, just projects in them. Yeah, um, yeah. And then out in my garage is where I've got all my actual figures, except for my display cabinet here, which is all the good stuff. But, um, yeah, I, I couldn't tell you what was in those drawers because when I moved in this house three years ago, I just moved them over here. And then yeah. <laughs> so I pulled everything out. And that's I think I, was, I put that on uh, Instagram and I was just like, there is so much, just little stuff. But, like, I've got a rune lord you know, on the, the shield bearer rune dwarf yeah, guy, yeah, yeah. I have four gyrocopters in there. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Because I was fiddling around with some dwarves as well. And there was just and then I found the leg off that wyvern I was missing. And I was just like, this is good. I finally got through it all. So I cleaned it all up, labeled it all, put it all in their own little like dwarves are now. My dwarf random stuff is in a dwarf one. And my, you know, it's like split it all up. So I'm like, right, if I feel like painting orcs, what 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 was on the go? And I can go and get that drawer out and look at it. Um, so that's what I'm planning on doing. But at the same time. I then pulled all the Wood Elf stuff out and went, what the hell do I have? And, yes, I had, I don't know, a fair bit of stuff, none of the Forest Spirit stuff, but a lot of, um, you know, I think I was trying to buy a lot of those old <clears throat> metal, you know, 5th and 6th yeah, edition, yeah, yeah. you know, mm. stuff. So I've got a bunch of them, not as many as I probably need, like Waywatchers and stuff, but, um, yeah, enough to get going anyway. So that's what I did. So I pulled them out and I'll... I guess I'll just now try start trying to work on a colour scheme or something and start painting them up and hit you up, Josh, for um, basing tips. So yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> what colours do you think you'll go? Like, do you you going to so, go for a um, season as such? Well, I, originally I was going to do autumn, and I've tried them. I've got a few ones that I did, you know, whenever I was six years ago, but I I just didn't fall in love with it. I actually like the green. So, but mm. what I decided to do, oh, you won't be able to see it actually. There's a figure, um, so one, I think it's the highborn wood elf figure, and he's it's mostly green, but part of his cape's like a real orange. So he's got like this mostly green look, but with a fairly striking orange mm. um, to contrast it. So I might do that, and then the scenery and all that can be mostly still sort of summery, but with that a little bit of that color coming in from autumn that's what i'm yeah. thinking yeah that's an interesting idea it yeah. is nice to have something contrasting the green yeah exactly um, so it's not all I've, green because when you look at some of those other ones they're just all green with browns yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i've yeah. always been a bit partial to the um the cherry blossom theme where it's just green and just hot pink everywhere okay yeah, yeah. i think yeah. it gives a nice yeah. contrast too <laughs> right yeah well, i need to dig through a few more like i went to um i don't know when i search for schemes i just get color schemes i get like all you know wood elf 
color schemes. I think it was Pinterest came up and I was going through bunches of that stuff. But yeah, I think I'll just do that and then um, hopefully they'll they'll look out okay. I don't know. It's just the bait man seeing your basing and how much stuff you put on. And I, with my stock take, I've got a crap ton as well. I just don't have heaps of the. I like some of those little bushes and stuff that you have on yours. So I want to probably oh, hit yeah. you up for where or what type of ones you're you you about. mean the ones i use for the knights? even the bretonians, the bretonians maybe? we've got yeah. like like actual you've got those little flower things which you seem to get everywhere but yeah um, yeah you've also got these almost uh, not ferns but quite thick plant things yeah you know? i know i know the ones <laughs> yeah so those type of things I, are um, pretty cool yeah that though those ones I printed, I got. Uh, I think you can get them stuff, separately as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, they are. Well, I've got yeah. resin bases anyway, which has tree stumps and all that. So that's what I was thinking. If I mix a few other things in, it's yeah, gonna be I'm totally good. Busy yeah. enough. Um, yeah. So that's what I've done, and then uh, yeah, I mean, I put my my idea just this, just I only just did this before the call, like what I might do for the 400 points. Just yeah, I saw I don't that. Know if you saw list. that, yeah. Um, I mean. It's, and the only reason I thought this was I get to sort out the colour scheme for sort of the dry. Uh, so what it is is eight glade guard, four glade riders, eight dryads, and then a wizard on a steed so he can go on the glade ride. I mean, not that I need five, but I'm just so used to, you know, having a unit of five. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, obviously I'm not worrying about competitiveness at 400 points i just thought it might give me a chance to sort of sort out the color scheme with like normal foot guys some cav and forest spirits and yep. sort of get that scheme through yeah 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 <clears throat> so would you be going with the dryads would you be going hard on the orange is that what you're no so what picturing? i was thinking is so you know how you see and that's why i was sending those aos ones you know when you see like that um that translucent ethereal blue that you oh, see on yeah, some of the yeah. faces i was going to mm. use that type of thing but orange oh, but i don't I think you can get an orange wash like that i'd have to make one but um so what i was thinking with the dried face knowing that at some point i might look for some of the other aos stuff or maybe not because now we i didn't realize how small those what are they called revenants or whatever they are were yeah, um yeah. but yeah i was thinking maybe make the faces some type of spirity look but it's orange not blue mm. or green i don't know yeah. maybe the Just, claws as well yeah mate I'd, i don't even know what the figures uh, i've got eight but they're all on sprue so i don't know <laughs> but yes if, if you think you've obviously painted a lot of them but yeah maybe um just make my own sort of orange glaze or something to to do it yeah, yeah. Um, you might need a dark color like wood color to yeah go yeah yeah to definitely it. yeah yeah do yeah, anyway, it should be pretty – they'd be pretty easy. I don't know. And I'm hoping I can use contrast. Like I've got a heap of green, all the green contrasts. So I was going to play around with some of them to see how much I can get in that without having to fully do the whole mm. – so I'm into the contrast a bit just for speed painting, but we'll see how we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I tend to end up highlighting them anyway, and I, I don't know if yeah. it's any quicker. But <laughs> yeah. No, it, yeah, it hastens it. It takes out yeah. a few steps with the base coating and the shading yeah. and that kind of thing. Yeah. And if you, it just gives you late levels to play with. Then after I think that. it gives you the also the thing I like about it is you get a whole figure done, mostly contrast. You can just play with it, and you feel yeah. okay. But then, yeah. if you've got the time, which I'm saying this most of the time, I probably won't. You know, you can go back and do more highlighting and stuff. Yes. How yes, many yeah. of us go back? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm seeing that with some of my empire when I pulled it out. It's like, oh, that's right, the huntsman. I mean, like, I didn't actually. They were just, <laughs> they were just base coat wash, no highlights at all. So uh, yeah. yeah, it's still good. Anyway, yeah, that was uh, that was my hobby time. Um, I don't think I did anything else. That was about it. So pretty good. Sweet. Should we get into this empire review then? Cool. Okay, so we're going to try our first army book review, and it is of the Empire. I'll probably just go through. Well, how did we choose this? I mean, we covered this a few episodes ago. Um, we always wanted to do Empire. Uh, sorry, army book reviews. Um, and I guess between the three of us, we felt just I guess crossing out some things and listening to some other podcasts. What's already been done? I guess we set it on Empire because either we'd played them before, or we've sort of knew a little bit about them yeah, um, yeah. plus we thought they'd be interesting with the old world um obviously because they're center front and center of it um 
And if you don't know much about them, they're also quite a varied army in terms of what they can do. So it's probably a good one to to dig into and if not, we'd learn about it as well. Um, so that's sort of, I don't know, do you guys think any other reason why you decide to choose Empire? Nah, well, it is kind of smack bang in the middle of, like you said, the old world. Like, you know, it it, it is, to me, it's one of the, the classic main armies. So, mm. yeah, it's definitely... I feel like the way that they're sort of structuring it is you, you do have like the empire as part of the old world, but it's kind of like this fragmented, you know, the empire sort of split a bit. Um, yeah. So that's, that's one of the main, obviously before the chaos invasion, um, I feel like that's going to be the main part of the law, the, you know, setting mm. the scene. Yeah. Yeah. I reckon, I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely get to what we think you know, old world repercussions here, but I could see uh, if it's successful, like just so many different storylines and characters and stuff, um, you know, vying for power that I can see why that, you know, they've probably picked a good era, but I don't know. Obviously that's um, down the track, but yeah, yeah. It's, mm. it's an interesting time. Yeah. Josh, what was sort of enticing to you about maybe cracking open the empire army book oh. metaphorically? I just felt like it sounded like the three of us would know a reasonable amount about the book <laughs> and it was a good one to settle on. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Yes, reasonable. <laughs> and, yeah, well, and the other, I mean, we were talking, remember, like about what other armies we had to play because that's, and that's when I went, well, you know, I like my empire. They, I, they came up pretty good, but I haven't played them for ages. So this will give us a chance. Maybe next time Mandra and I get together to at least get the empire on the table as well against yep. something. Um, yeah. yeah. Everyone yeah. says they're not, you know, they're, they're relatively l- low strength in six, but mm. they've, they've definitely got a lot of potential. And I think, you know, so, I think feel like sometimes I don't get enough credit for the stuff that they can do. Yeah. Yeah. No, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, well, no, that sounds good. I mean, we'll get to, I was just thinking of a million different things to say then, but I'm like, they'll come down the track, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. As we get through different stuff. Awesome. Okay. Well, the structure we thought we'd, and um, I said this at the beginning, this might be a long one. And if it is, you'll just, we'll cut it and you'll get it. Our next episode will be the continuation of this uh, Empire Army Book Review. Uh, We want to get through law um, and that's probably the unknown for us because I don't think any of us are uh, Warhammer historians. Um, but I know a little bit, but, you know, this, that section could go five minutes, could go 20, who knows. Uh, but we, we do thought, uh, we did think it was important to touch on law just because it sets the whole, I mean, it, law just sets the grounding and, the, and the, the bed for everything to come on top of it, I think. So, um, and I, with that, you know, it's definitely sixth edition-ish, but not really. I mean, I, I went back to my fourth, fourth ed book and looked around and I just pulled the eighth one out and had a look again. Um, to see if I'd missed anything, but who knows? Um, but th- but then we we're going to go into the actual army book, so we'll probably sort of go through that uh, front to back a little bit, in the sense, go through the army units and the and the stuff that you can choose, the characters and stuff, magic items. Um, touch on some of the magic law stuff because obviously they have, you know, they just have access to the um, the big rule books. Uh, do you call it the big rule book or the big red book in six? I don't know. Um, yeah, sure. <laughs> is it? Yeah. <laughs> it was the first BRB. Um, yeah, we, we want to t- touch them, even though they're not, you know, they don't have their own dedicated magic as such. Um, then we're going to look at like how we think they would play and the mechanics around that. Maybe touch on what we would take in lists. I don't think any of us have gone and put together massive you know, specific tournament lists or anything, but just, you know, how, how do we think after looking through all that, you know, what would we put together? Um, maybe touch on, you know, what, you know, how the miniatures that are out there, any alternatives, stuff like that. And then like Andrew was just saying at the top there, what about the old world or how does it fit into the, the new game coming out? Um, what do we expect to see or not see and stuff like that? Um, yeah, so there's a lot of different topics there. We really have no idea how long any of this will take. So we're just going to kick in, I guess, starting with law. What do you guys think? Yeah. Yep. Let's kick cool. in. Cool. So it. where, look, oh, it's almost like Andrew should start this because it goes all the way back to the dwarves, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. Um, Does it I was, really? Well, I don't know. I mean, when whenever you read all the, well, the four army books I've got here, they always talk about it all started, uh, you know, when the, the 
the elves and the dwarves stopped fighting and the, the elves left the old world. Um, and have you got, wait, which army books have you got? How many have uh, you got? Which editions have you got there? Fourth, I got fourth, seventh and eighth and then I bought sixth and it's still coming. That's in America. Oh, okay. I'm just using the PDF for the sixth edition. Oh, I've got sure. third edition too but it doesn't really have an army book. It just had crap, you know, a few paragraphs of yep. old stuff. They didn't have yep. a real, real map, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, ultimately, the, as I understand it, well, actually, I made a point here, like, where did they even come from, like, in terms of inspiration? And obviously, overall, outside of Warhammer, you can tell the empire, uh, a Germanic sort of Holy Roman Empire inspired theme. Like, do you think that's, I mean, do you guys know much about history? Because I'm not a massive history buff, but it seems like, obviously, the empire and the whole old world is just ripped off of our own world. And so yeah, you can yeah. sort of see where they've placed them in terms of that. Um, yeah, I'd say Germanic. definitely Germanic. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Aesthetically for sure. Yeah, yeah, that Swiss sort of, yeah, some of the, you know, just the armour and um, the helmets, like they're just that sort of, I don't know, that 1400 sort of era of, knights and black powder first starting to come out um yeah. yeah that and when i was looking it up like people were saying this holy roman empire and i get that too because they're obviously so religious <laughs> like it's def you know whether or not it's ulrich or then eventually oh, sigmar right. and stuff it's very driven um from you know a, a pretty religious fervor as well um so I think they've, you know, they've borrowed a lot of that, I think. But at the same time, the other thing I was thinking about, this before we get into the full law here, is um, obviously Warhammer came a lot from Tolkien, Tolkienistic inspiration. But I feel like, I don't think the Empire did. I don't know if you guys would agree with that. I don't know if we haven't talked nah. about this, but I feel like they are their own. They're more ripped off from real real world than, say, Tolkien. Yeah, yeah, they had to rip yeah, her off yeah. somewhere, and yeah. in this case, it wasn't Lord of the Rings. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Whereas some <laughs> of the other races, you could tell, are like Lord of the Rings ish. Um, yeah. But yeah, I feel like Empire was, you know, straight up, you know, just more re ref reflective of our history than anything else. So. I mean, it is interesting in that the two factions uh, in human uh, in Warhammer and in Lord of the Rings, you've got one that's sort of an all rounder living in the cities and you know, has got lots of infantry and knights and stuff. And the other one's very horse-based. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah. the subtleties of that, though, actually are quite different. And yes. there is yeah. in no way, Bretonia, uh, in no way similar to Rohan. No, no, no. <laughs> no, not at all. Yeah. 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 yeah, that was interesting. And the other point, like, again, well, I think Empire is interesting and popular, like, it's probably a fair pop, like fairly popular army, given that you know it's in starter boxes and stuff. Is I, like you just want to see humans, and I think that was a comment even made with the whole City of Sigma, full AOSifying of City of Sigma, that they really wanted to get back and visit humans in AOS because it was like the missing piece and the biggest question people had is like, what are the humans doing? <laughs> Where yeah, are they yeah. living? You know, I think people, we're humans. We're just selfish. We want to. We're not selfish. We actually just want to know what the hell we're doing in this world. Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Self-obsessed. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's why they, they're interesting, even though they're not fantastical in that sense. You know, they're just boring stat yeah. level three. You know, it's a three bit, across yeah. the board. <laughs> they don't have that like, you know, the, to me, I, I almost would have thought you would have had that Bretonian as like the, a bit more of the main feel, like a lot more knights and art, like typical um medieval where else mm, mm. yeah obviously the empire is sort of you know it's it's almost more hitting towards the renaissance sort of era yeah it's a different period i think yeah. of history but they've drawn from i mean again i'm yeah. not by far a historian at all but um nah. you're right like the bretonians are very much more sort of medieval like the peasants and the yeah, yeah typical and, yeah. 1200 sort of yeah Dude, you know, 11 1200 time period mm. It's interesting that you bring up the Holy Roman Empire, though, because that completely precedes yeah, anything yeah. in the Middle Ages, you know? So yeah, it's, yeah, it's a different era of, not, of our history, which they've then whacked them together. Yeah. yeah. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a nice contrast, really, the yeah. way no, I think well, about it, between the it, religious sort of verbal <laughs> of them. <laughs> well, to get to move on to the actual, you know, where it all started. Yep, you, go you for know. it. But it's funny because the whole timing is funny to me because when you get into it, you learn that, you know, the dwarf, the elves have retired. They've been, I don't know, again, I'm not, I don't know much about the War of the Beard, if that's what it is. I can't remember the time frame, but you have this huge clash between Empire and elves and the elves run off to Ulthuan. I guess some of them don't because they stay back to be wood elves. Um, but it's, there's this void left and it's these, you know, almost they're described, especially in the fourth edition book, I think it was, or the seventh, one of them. They're described as like primitive, living in mud huts, stone, you know, using stone weapons and clothing themselves in fur, like the humans. And then obviously the, the top, the big tribe was the, I don't know how to say it. Is it Umbragons? Umbragons? I don't know how you say it. The Sigma, Sigma's tribe. Because there's a bunch of these tribes running around. But not to jump too far ahead, but this is like only two and a half thousand years or so before current era, if you want to call it that, before end times. And I find it funny that two and a half, it's almost like these humans are described as being like totally primitive and then in two like and a half cave, thousand man. years they've got guns and tanks <laughs> just, and stuff. I'm like, the dwarves have really were educated these days. They dudes walk out of the, yeah. Well, the dwarves didn't have <laughs> um, black powder during the uh, war with the elves or it wasn't really used, utilised. Right. Um, so I think that was the era. Um, so during the War of the Beard, um, Especially if you look at the lists and the supplements, you can't take black powder. Um, ah, so you yeah. can only take like. But it's not that far back in history. Oh. This is done. I don't know. Uh, nah. Maybe maybe there was a uh, maybe there was uh, people who thought the Earth was only ten thousand years writing this initially back in the seventies or something. I don't know. Yeah, but yeah. It feels like they've jammed the development of humans very very fast. Like within two and a half thousand years, they've gone from you know living you know just clothing themselves in fur to quite advanced you know it's kind of funny but i don't know like i think in real world we probably took tens of thousands or fifty thousand years to do that you know what i mean but yeah you know, yeah just, at least yeah um, but, um i think that was during so um the big you know the sundering happened with the elves and obviously mm. uh the dwarves went through their massive down period where um uh basically uh the, you know those earthquakes and green skins were everywhere um, I think that's where it sort of came that Sigma sort yep. of um, rescued the Dwarf King, whoever yeah, his name that's was at basically, the time. It's basically like a bro fest from then on. Like yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's <laughs> yeah. it. That, they were nothing. I, I think the Dwarves didn't think much of them. And then basically, yeah, they basically saved or well, helped save the King and they sort of formed together an alliance and then sort of beat the Greenskins back. Um and then that's when that friendship sort of came. And then obviously, I, I think the technology, um, dwarves started sharing technology with the humans. Yeah. And yeah. that's that was like that original bond, like you said. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, that's right. I mean, that's where it all starts. Like Sigma helps that, yeah, King Kurg and Ironbeard yep. rescues him. Um, but am I right? Is that, I mean, you guys might know, but it sounded like that wasn't World Edge Mountains. That was like they were going to like the Grey Mountains or something and he got captured or who knows i don't know i don't know how it happened but it, yeah somewhere yeah. Some, yeah. somewhere <laughs> and then anyway he does that he gets gifted gold moraz and then yep. uh eventually a crown i think as well um someone's speakers banging around there i think it's right now um and then yeah he orders the is it alaric the mad to start making the rune fangs is your someone's are you fidd anyone fiddling with a I am not okay. fiddling. Yeah, I can hear it. it. Sounds like a connection getting. Yeah, it's fine now. It's fine now. I still think it was just going on and off and buzzing a bit. Yeah. Um. Then, yeah, I don't know. Like, it sounds like Sigma was reigning for like about fifty years. As sort of, you know, with that, it sort of brought all the empire together. He was running this almost utopian. Got them all going well. Um, yeah. The rune fangs were still getting made, I think, at that time. I don't think Sigma ever saw them. I think that's, I think that was the note I made somewhere else, because um, I think it took that long. And then he wanders off to go see his friend, <laughs> King Kurgan Ironbeard, but never. I don't know. There's no. He just disappears. Goes to AOS. I don't know. Um, he headed off east and was never seen again. And so then you start this thousand years or whatever of the empire just 
not having any leaders and they're just back to divided stuff and, you know, the yeah. different electors and provinces are fighting and you just got this big, yeah, it doesn't really say, there's not a lot of documentation, at least on the empire side, of what the hell they were doing in that time. I don't know, nah. do you guys know much about that? No, nah, not not really, but yeah, it just seemed, you know, up up to that point, there wasn't a whole lot um, before that, the the war, the great war against chaos. Mm, mm. So that yeah, they weren't doing much then. Um, actually, it might even be more than a thousand years actually, but um, yeah, because that would be I don't even know what the timing here is now. Yeah, it goes for. I, I think I've mixed missed stuff in my notes here because I think then yet the Skaven Black Plague comes in what the year one 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 one. Um, so they are like obviously the Empire doing stuff, but it sounds like they just that you know they don't have that really strong elect account um, sort of you know, electing a, um, what is, what's it called? What are they called? Emperor. And then, you know, that sort of stuff's a little bit still wishy-wash. So it sounds like, again, old world isn't going back that far, but, you know, at the end of the day, the whole empire was pretty, you know, going between being divided, maybe a few periods of, you know, relative peace and then infighting again, probably helping yeah. the dwarves in that time, but then a bit more infighting. It's, yeah, it sounds yeah. like, yeah, it's just... I don't know if you call it the um, what's it called in is it the Dark Ages? You know, in in our world where it was just like yeah, just happened. went dark. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there's no years. history. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. yeah, it's weird. I I haven't looked too much on the other army books, but I, I know Bretoni was very active in that early, um, you know, on the on the Sigma calendar between zero to a thousand or something. There's a lot of Bretonian activity, but I don't know what was happening in the Empire. Yeah, I can't think off the top of my head what the Bretonians are up to in that particular yeah, time frame. Yeah. And then you get, so it keeps going, probably hundreds of years. But, yeah, I mean, the next big point there is, yeah, the Great War Against Chaos, which is the main thing that started to bring everyone together. Um, and that's obviously, as time goes on, as the old world comes out, I'm sure we'll learn more about this. But at the end of the day, this is where you get um, the dwarves go. Is this the one where the dwarves go and ask for help as well? I thought, the dwarves, the was dwarves, that just, I thought dwarves helped. Is that what it's the other way? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that must have been the dwarves must have gone and got Sigma. I thought there was another war where they actually went to the Empire and got help. Can't remember. But, um, yeah, in any case, it ends up being Magnus the Pious is the one who, I guess, wrangles everyone together and heads north, gets some dwarves as well, and they end up, um, I guess, eventually pushing back. The, the Great War Against Chaos, which is where, from that date is what you'd probably say is, the, I guess, the classic empire is from that date, if you if you know what I mean. Like you end up with, obviously, Magnus the Pious. You end up with, um, he he asks Teclas to train up the, you know, their primitive magic. They, they are using magic by the sound of it, but I don't think they're, you know, they're not that great at it. Yep. Um, but he sees how good, and they're probably, if anything, they're probably heaps suspicious of it over that time, you know, that it was probably, they're probably shunning magic more than anything. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's just one of those things as well. Like a lot of people weren't too sure on the humans. They're kind of like the new kid on the block. So yeah. I don't think everybody was sharing, you know, all their secrets. best kept secrets. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so it was kind of like, yeah, obviously, yeah, the dwarves, the dwarves obviously help the humans and whatnot um, in the Empire, but, you know, obviously rune magic was still dwarves and, you know, they just shared bits and pieces with weaponry. But, yeah, yeah I, I'm, that's my feeling of what happened with, uh, obviously, magic as well and elves. Yeah, that's right. They get Teclas. I think Teclas stays there. for. Or well, I think Teclas goes back to Ulthwan and he basically convinces them all. I think there's something about that where he's like, yep, I think they're ready. I think they need it. Um, so then he goes back and I guess establishes the the colleges of magic effectively. And humans obviously aren't as good as elves. So, you know, his, his view is, look, if, it, if we pick the right people and we train them up from young, they're not going because, you know, magic is inevitably is at its essence is chaos. Like it's evil in a sense, if you want to call it that. Um, but humans at least if they just focus on say one like you know one part of that that magic then they they're going to be useful at it um yeah. you know they're never going to be able to 
just do all of them like obviously the the high elves can and the lizardmen and stuff but yeah so you get the colleges of magic coming up and yeah for that next whatever it is four five hundred years or three hundred whatever you've got that i guess right up to cal franz date where you've sort of got what you would i guess from that point on you would you would look at that and go yeah that's classic warhammer fantasy empire you know it's got the colleges of magic it's got all the you know all the stuff you see in eighth edition would have been in that that time period i guess um yep. up until yeah then you get the the uh the end times which we shall not name um <laughs> but i mean it is interesting i made a point right at the beginning too but like as far back as i could tell at least from say third edition there was always that concept of like the world's doomed like this ultimate end times and it's always going to be this fight against chaos and i think it was always i'm not saying they're always destined to destroy the warhammer world as such but i think they've always played on that idea that you know it's humans and you're living against this you're living a shit life with no good future and chaos is going to get you in the end um, yeah and well, i have a whole unit based on that don't they the flagellants the flagellants yeah yeah so that's the thing like they've been calling that forever and i sort of felt even in the early days of 40k that i feel like that's that's sort of how 40k was set up as well like this whole same theme where it was like at the end of the day it's just constant warfare against something that you can probably never beat you know um so they've obviously got this as a really good theme <laughs> underlying both games and it's obviously paid off most of the time maybe fantasy not so much but um yeah this one hopefully the next version will be uh you know we know the end but we don't have to play in that one so it should be good <laughs> i feel like a world of unending battle is a pretty good setting to be For a, selling a war game. War, miniature war games <laughs> yeah yeah that's right <laughs> Yeah, yeah. you kind of always the underdog, like you're saying. It's sort of I think everyone likes an underdog, and you look at a lot of these, especially the good guys. The good guys are always tend to be on the brink of brink of destruction. You know, like the dwarves are on a downfall, the high elves are on a downfall, like the the wood elves are like in their little realm. You know, Bretonians are sort of the same. Like there's always you know chaos or somebody knocking on your door like it's yeah the, nobody's like it seems like all the the evil um races are always the the strong ones in the stories ross mm-hmm. like the good guys are always sort of the you know the underdogs yeah, um yeah. which is i think what brings people to the, the good guys a bit because everybody loves you know loves being the underdog, underdog. Yeah. yeah yeah no totally and i think um that's what makes them if they're relatable in a fantasy world, I think that's sort of the, the summary to me that like it's a good, you could, without even knowing too much about the whole law, you see an empire, I mean, you sort of get it, you know, you know, knights, you know, cannons and it's, I don't know, it just sort of grounds it. And then obviously you throw in all the fantasy around it and then you've got a, you know, you've got a pretty cool story. So yeah. Um, I don't know if there's any other, any things or, timelines or stories that you know about that are particularly interesting or i mean is there anything law based that you um i guess actually i will bring up one thing sorry is obviously even though how it sort of works is um is that you know you've got i think it's 12 i think there's 15 elector like votes now but there was originally 12 rune fangs main is that does that sound right am i getting the numbers right it was 11 12 it was 11 something like that whatever yep. it is yeah um but ultimately what it is is each of those provinces has um you know a count that that runs it and they're sort of an elector and that but they they vote each time whenever i don't know how you decide that the emperor's finished unless he dies or whatever but yeah ultimately they vote each it's sort of a democracy in that sense although there's been issues around that yeah, so like that's how you get those, and, yeah. yeah that's how you get the, <laughs> the other storylines that will probably no doubt come back in um but it gives you that that variability um, and diversity that the empire has. That you've got these different provinces and stuff that not only have different colours and all that sort of stuff, but sort of different specialties um, as well. Which obviously, with one army, still gives you heaps of you know variability in the army and the army list and how you can play. So yeah, I thought that you know they did a good job of doing that as well. Yeah, gives you lots of opportunity for for painting up different schemes and that type of thing too. I think it le- really leads into that side of the hobby too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And especially, I mean, again, I don't know much about vampires, but that whole 
fact that you've got one uh, one one sort of province in there that's actually you know taken over by vampires originally. Were they? I mean, they were voting for a bit, were they, or not, or do, were they never voting? How did the elector counts? Do you guys know much about Sylvania in that part? Um, oh, I don't know if they were as such an elector count. I, I don't know that part of it, but I do oh, okay. know basically that they were sort of um, kind of part of the empire to a certain degree. Yeah. Um, and then obviously they started looking a bit suspect after a while because yeah, they, they never aged. Or... <laughs> yeah, that's right. Wasn't Vlad, Vlad like had to do 15 different identities or something? I don't know. Yeah, so yeah. Like, yeah. I keep I... living this long. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I think that's what happened in like the 17 or 1500s or 1700s where they sort of, that's the whole vampire storyline, isn't it? Where they go on. Yeah, all the Von yeah. Sort of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we won't touch on that in this book, but yeah, that's probably something we look at vampire book. Cool. Okay, well, we won't touch much on, I mean, to me, the law just, you know, you've got this fairly diverse, you know, the largest probably population of humans, but, you know, quite powerful in the sense of now they've got a lot of tech from not only the elves, but all, like in magic, but also the dwarves. Um, who knows what it'll be like at the in the old world era, but, um, you know, from what we're talking about in sixth edition, um, you know, they're sort of at their peak, if, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, of all that sort of stuff. So I think we'll probably flick over to going through sort of the book a little bit now. So, I mean, if people are listening and either know it off by heart or want to follow along at some point, we're just going through the, the actual sixth edition uh, book slash PDF because mine's in the mail. Um, cause yeah, I pulled it all out and realized I only had a seventh edition. It's just kind of funny, but anyway. They can be hard to get, you know, like people yeah. hoard these things and, you know, you, you got to go on eBay and pay exorbitant prices sometimes. So Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I bought one from the US. I've got a US postal address that I use for some business stuff. So oh, I yeah, it yeah. to that. So it's like $2 postage to get there, but now it's getting shipped from there. So, yeah, yeah. um, so I won't get it. It'll probably come like tomorrow, the day after. Okay, cool. So we are back. Um, we are just going to run. So one thing I <laughs> I don't want to be critical. I love six. I think by far it seems like I can see why people love it. But, man, the army books are confusing to move through. They seem to be – I don't like the layout. I, I, I don't know if I'm just spoiled with – Yeah. I'm pretty sure fourth was the same way as eighth, though, where it's like law and then army list, like special rules, and then like beastry, sorry, and then – army special rules like this six is a bit weird it's like it jumps you straight into like what i call the beast area beast area only because that's what i'm used to calling it from like fourth fourth edition but basically just like descriptions of you know the army and the troops and stuff you get but then it doesn't sort of it has some mention of special rules in there but some of the special yeah. rules are described in the actual army list and then some are somewhere else so it gets a little confusing i don't know if you guys find that Nah, yeah, it's it it is yeah. frustrating because it doesn't give you any. You got to flick back back and forward. Um, yeah. So you can't really stay in one place. So obviously, you know, all your different weapons and costs and whatnot, like uh, in in the second part, and then obviously, yeah, like you said, it would be nice if they had like a a small rundown of the special rules, possibly in the actual the army list part itself. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I mean, I think they do that better in the later editions, but who knows? So, yeah. So, like, obviously, it, it kicks off into like core uh, soldiers of the empire, state troops, and stuff. But do you want to touch on any of what we would call special rules, or do you want to just do it as we run into them? So, I know detachments is obviously a big one, and it does almost go straight into that. Um, yeah. Oh, well, I mean, we can either do that or we can, because some of the special rules are, are quite um, critical. So yeah. I, would, I would have thought. Um, so you want to talk just... about those special rules first? Yeah, like we detachments. Might, yeah, okay, cool. We might sure. flick back and just have a quick yeah, yeah discussion. Detachments is a huge one. but Yeah, okay. Well, let's, who wants to run through that then? Because that's definitely different, hey, than any other army. Yeah, well, I can mm. I can start talking about um, detachments. Um, so, um, basically, some some of the different units have the detachment special rule, um, and that 
is flagged in different ways depending on what unit it is. Um, so basically there's a, a detachment and a parent unit. So obviously the parent unit's the bigger unit, the detachment's obviously a smaller side unit. Um, so uh, basically you you'll have your state troops. Um, so how it is, uh, spearmen, swordsmen, handgunners, they can be used as an independent unit, a parent unit, or a detachment. Um, the militia units, so obviously the archers, crossbowmen, free companies, um, they can't be used as a parent unit, but they can be used as a detachment or an independent unit. Um, great swords may not be used as a detachment, but they can be a parent unit or an independent unit. Um, I think that's obviously for great swords, that would be a, a killer detachment uh, if you could have that <laughs> yeah, yeah. just running into your flank. Um, so the special rules with the detachments are, so um, each parent unit can have one or two detachments. Um, detachments do not count towards the minimum number of core units. Um, the army has to field, so obviously only your parent units will. Um, detachment um, detachment signs can range from the minimum of five models um, to a maximum of half the number of the models of their parent unit rounding mm -hmm. down. Um, so obviously they're, they're smaller. Um, mm -hmm. Usually see them running as like units of you know 10 and 12. Um, detachments can't um, choose any of the unit's weaponry options. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, detachments cannot choose any of the unit's weapon or armor options. It cannot have a standard bearer, musician, or champion. So they're just the, the stock standard whatever, troops. Yeah, whatever it comes in the army list, that's what you get. Yeah. yeah, and detachments must be deployed simultaneously with a parent unit, and they've got to stay within three inches. So usually they obviously just hover off Does that? Do the they side. have to stay, or is that they just one of them has to be deployed within? Nah, uh, so I think they oh, lose the detachment, yeah. Ah, okay, yeah. They so, can only be act as a detachment if they're within If they're three within, inches. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, yep. All friendly units are immune to panic caused by fleeing broken or destroyed detachments, so nobody really cares about them. Um, and detachments are treated as a normal independent unit for the purposes of calculating victory points. Yep. Um, so when they're within three inches of the parent unit, um, it's a normal unit. It's completely separate, independent from its parent unit. Um, so basically, detachments use the following special rules only if they're within three inches of the parent unit. Um, so they... yeah so it's yeah. only within yeah but they are not uh, but not if the parent unit is fleeing or is declared a flee uh, charge reaction ah, okay, so yeah, basically the, the parent unit yeah. yeah, still needs to be sitting there yeah. um, so note there is a note here that the special rules only apply to detachments and not to the parent units if a character joins a detachment, that detachment will be treated as an independent unit, so you can't throw a character in there. Um, and it will not be able to use any of the following special rules for as long as the character stays with it. So basically, yeah, yeah they're, they're stock standard units. Yeah. Um, so you can use the parent unit's um, leadership um, or the general's leadership, obviously, within the 12 inches. So the two... Main... I like that, though. It's within the 12 inches of the parent unit. So effectively, you're getting a lot... You're getting... You're getting longer range there, hey. Yeah, yeah, potentially. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> um, so basically, so you can use it as sort of like a charge. Uh, so, so the first uh, thing a detachment can do, the special rule is support fire. So if the enemy movement phase, a detachment may stand and shoot against an enemy charging against its parent unit. If the detachment itself has not been charged and is not counter charging in the same turn, a detachment can offer support fire regardless of the uh, distance the enemy um, starts the charge from and does not suffer the minus one to hit penalty for standing and shooting as it itself has not been charged. Mm. Um, so that's that's pretty good. Um, to me, it's not the best thing um, unless it's maybe, you know, you, you've got a good chance of standing and shooting and really doing some damage, but... A small detachment, you're only looking at sort of what a five frontage, you might get what five shots out. Yeah, um, yeah. 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 D yeah. For, for me, they, they not... read well. It's like a cool rule. And then I think in reality, um, we, yeah. we, we'll get to that in the battles, I guess, tactics section. But it feels like um, you're right, like the size of these units sometimes. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. In a smaller game, though, pretty powerful. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, well, it would be, um, I suppose. But I've, obviously, your detachment's only half the size. But it doesn't matter if it's shooting because you can only really shoot with the front rank anyway, doesn't it? So Yeah, yeah. Mm. Unless you were, like put your yeah. detachment on a hill. Could you do that as well? Next uh, to it, on a hill? Yeah, if you mm. could wrangle that. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Um, so counter charge is the other um, special rule that they've got. Um, so basically... Uh, in the enemy movement phase, a detachment may counter charge an enemy unit charging its parent unit. If the detachment itself has not been charged, after the enemy has finished moving its charges, but before remaining moves, the detachment can declare a normal charge against the enemy. Note that if detachments can draw a line of sight to an exposed flank of the enemy, there's enough movement to reach it, it can charge the enemy in its flanks. That's pretty big. Um, yeah, it, um, yeah, it is. It's crazy. Yeah. So if it should have a uh, charge to the front, according to the normal rules of charging, the counter charge does not... Oh, hang on. It can charge the enemy in the flank, even if it should have charged to the front. Yeah, and you um, just have so... to hit it. You get the free wheel. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Like it's not, it's not like, yeah, If you, you're basically wheeling away from the front. Like that. So they've got a figure here in the book showing that yep. supporting charge where the, the parent unit's charged. The detach detachment should really be charging in the front and just like clipping. Yeah. Um, but they've wheeled away so they actually hit the flank and then the they get that blown, full yeah, flank charge. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so and you can even get a rear charge in some um circumstances, I believe. That's right, isn't it? In this edition, I think. Uh um, I mean, yeah, po possibly if somehow how yeah, I'm struggling uh, to be. Oh, or maybe that's more if uh, your parent unit's charged in the flank. Yeah. Charge them in the flank and then you yeah, wheel around. I can't remember. I've case. seen maybe it's in one of the um Chronic, like the Chronicles or whatever. Someone's well, you've only got to be three that. inches away, so I suppose you could be in a, a, a position where, but, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, yeah. I'm, look, I'm sure it's happened. <laughs> yeah, maybe if you, if the, if, that were, if the parent angle was, the parent unit was slightly angled across slightly, so the detachment was maybe just is there facing any, the is rear there any edge, weird things still three like, inches on the edge. I don't oh, know. No, it probably wouldn't work. I was just thinking, is there any weird things like where the parent unit's gone in, won around in combat and lapped around, and now the detachment moves up, so now it's like still within three inches of this lapped around parent unit, but then another unit charges. Now no, it gets too complex. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's to be able to hit the side, like yeah, the area that the unit is charging. You know. Yeah. Yeah, so that's cool. So they can counter charge. Um, and then they also, sorry, that's the supporting charge. I just jumped ahead there. Sorry, the counter charge. So, so that was the counter charge, yeah. yeah um, yeah, so yeah. basically, it follows all the rules um, for a normal flank charge if it obviously ends up in the flank. Um, but um, the one thing it doesn't do is it um, uh, doesn't cause the panic check for the yes, enemy. Yeah, but it does break their combat. Yeah, their rank bonus yeah, as does. long as they're within like, unit strength five or above. Is that how it works? Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, support charge, which you just touched on, uh, Gomo. It's um, in its own movement phase, a detachment may make a supporting charge by hitting the flank of an enemy uh, unit engaged at the front by its parent unit. So it's the same, same sort of deal, but obviously it's in its own sort of turn, I suppose. Yeah. Um, its own movement phase, but the beauty, as you said before, you can still be in the the frontage, but your um, so basically, your detachment. Ah, uh, sorry, the the parent unit's charging in, and your detachment could still be in the front, but it's still mm. hitting the flank. So it's got the ability to it's breaking the charge sort of rules, basically. But that's yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. Cool. So they're both yeah. if yeah, which is to me that's huge as well. Um, the fact that you can get that flank charge in considering you're still in the front of that enemy. Um, so that that would be something very, very dangerous if you were coming up against that yeah. that style. Um, so yeah, basically yeah. you're hitting the flank um, next to the parent unit. They declare the supporting charge when you declare the charge of the parent unit. Note that if the charge of the parent unit does not hit the target, Failed psychology test, out of range, etc. The detachment will not charge either. After the parent unit has been brought into contact with the parent unit and all charges have been moved, but before remaining moves, the detachment charge can charge the same target. If the detachment can draw a line of sight to the exposed flank of the target, 
and there was enough movement to reach it. So obviously you still need the movement. Um, yeah. But, but only to hit that. That's the interesting yeah. thing. It's Yeah, you just only need to hit just that touch corner. it. Yeah. yeah. And then you can do the full wheel. That's good. Yeah. So there, yeah. Like, that's, I don't know. For me, the the counter charge and support charge are huge. Support fires, mm. oh, not so much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Being able to break ranks and that type of thing, incredibly important. Mm, mm. Especially yeah. in six, where static combat res is actually a huge part of. Um, yeah, it's very low. Proportionally, isn't it? yeah, yeah. It's, it's a huge part of the combat res. Yeah, yeah. I can see the. Um, again, I don't want to jump ahead too much to tactics and stuff, but I, I, I see one of the the biggest detriments is how fitting all this into your battle lines. Sometimes, like if you want to have these big unit with two different detachments on either side, and then you've probably got another core unit with some other detachments. Like they can get quite big. Probably, I don't know, a bit unwieldy maybe. Um, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nah, mm. definitely. I, I know what you're saying. Like, you know, like here it says you can have two detachments. It's like, well, how many bloody, you know, how big is your army going to be if you have these parent units and detachments all, all over mm. the shop? Yeah. Especially if you line up like te- a couple of units of, of handgunners, like 10, <laughs> ten in yeah. a, a, a yeah. rank and that type of thing too. You run out of space really quickly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you start blocking yourself and all sorts of. Yeah, so you touched on this, uh, Andrew, though. That like, That's that main rule. Um, but basically, you know, the ones who get that are those, um, the ones who can be the parent units, like uh, the state troops, obviously one of the main ones, which are the yep. albedeer, spearmen, swordsmen and handgunners. Um, did you want to touch on any other special rules now? You want, or that's the sort of main one. I know there's the that's, prayers, but we could do that when we hit characters, I guess. Yeah, I think, I think that's the main one, like yeah. um, especially for your core. That's, yeah. yeah. Yeah, cool. Oh, well, let's go. So obviously humans are just threes pretty much across the board, three initiative, threes, all the other stuff except for, you know, one wound, one attack, movement four. Um, yeah, and then you've got these halberdiers, spearmen, swordsmen, hand, um, and handgunners, I guess. But let's just talk about halberdiers, spearmen, and swordsmen because they're like your core fighting, you know, units, you know, and the others are sort of missile troops. Um except for the more specialised, like specials and rare guys. Um, what do you see? Obviously in this edition it seems like swordsmen are still the, the ones to, to pick, I guess, by the look of them. Like that seems to be the ones in six that people do, and that's because they've got a, you know, an extra blip of weapon school and initiative. Um, so you, you're getting that not only hitting on fours or even threes, sorry, even threes sometimes, um, you're also getting that blip of initiative, which is pretty important, I guess. Um, in you know subsequent rounds of combat, um, they get yeah not just that they also get a better armor save as well. Oh, sorry, they got the combat. yes. Sorry, you get four yeah. plus effectively. Is it four yeah. plus? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. I feel like the combination of the better armor save and often not getting hit on threes by other weapon yeah. skill four troops. Yeah, combine that, you often end up with a better defensive unit than you'd otherwise get with like yeah. spearmen, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, which is just a shame. It feels like they can't, you know, they're giving you these three different, and this is not just sixth edition, it's eighth, it's all the other ones. And you're given these variabilities, but they've just never been able to like, there's always been a clear winner sometimes and the other two have been, I don't know, I just feel like they, they could do something slightly different to try and, you know, make them more useful for different uh, strategies almost. You know, if you want to be more defensive, I feel like, you know, you know, should spearmen be more defensive, but they're actually not, you know, in the gameplay. Yeah, stuff it should like be. That. Yeah, it should be. <laughs> yeah. So it's a bit of a shame. Well, that's, yeah, well, that's the thing. Like, I suppose, you know, for, for a core unit, at the end of the day, a, a lot of these, you know, you, especially if you've got a detachment, you, you got to be able to sort of take, take, the, take the attacks. And I suppose, like you're saying, that's where you're going to be having that extra um extra save is going to be helping you out um mm. i can't see a unit of spearmen or like how it is doing awesome um in combat I, I suppose the end of the day is what function are they going to do um and like yeah. you said you know it's the armor save modifier is huge um but yeah it's it's one of those things. I find I find these sort of units really hard to field sometimes when you got the 
strength three, tough three, one attack. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's it's just sort of fitting it fitting it in the army. Um, so I, I don't know, like where where would you see these guys? You know, w- would you would you have just big blocks of twenty? Like I, I can't see. Yeah, well, I mean, let's we could probably. I mean, yes, but I mean, do we want to get into that now? Do we want to like just go through what the options all are? Yeah, because it feeds into, into some of the other army options as to what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So but I think ultimately you would. Yeah, I don't think you'd see many armies that don't have, unless they're skewed lists that don't have at least some of these guys in it. Mm, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Then you got handgunners, which again the same stats, but obviously they've got. Um, the handgun, but I, I mean, it's worth touching on the handgun rule, um, which I find interesting. This is where you keep switching around. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, <so> now we're... <laughs> I mean, maybe, uh, maybe we won't. Do you want to just go through? If no, it's no, not let's, let's, the, the yeah. move or fire or? Well, no, it's, and I didn't realize this till I was reading uh, six edition, this you? book. Uh, they get the D6, extra D6. Extra D6 um, range, isn't it? Range yeah. on the first shot. Mm. So Empire Handgun, uh, Move or Fire, Armor Piercing, Strength 4. Yep. Um, and on their first volley, it's an extra D6 uh, to their range just when they, uh, you know, when you when you obviously elect to shoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which, I don't know, I find that sort of interesting. The problem is it's ballistic skill 3 shooting and it's going to be fucking shit anyway. But yeah. <laughs> I find it funny that... It's an interesting, like, cause you you probably have that with your dwarf sometimes, where you're like, "Oh, this is cool, but I'm out of range, and if I move, I can't shoot them." Like, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Whereas, you know, this if you're right on the twelve inch line, you probably got a good chance that they're in range because you're always going to roll one extra, so they're twenty five inch range. Yeah, true. Um, you know, <clears throat> but again, I'll go back to my first point: they're, they're ballistic skill three and shooting. You know, I don't know. It feels like you probably won't get a lot, but it is strength four, and you know, against the right chaff chaff unit or something, you might be able to cause some damage in turn one, um, even if you're, you know, on, on turn one. You know, if you go on first, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. It's it's kind of one of those things. Like I suppose you couldn't rely on it. At the end of the day, it's you know what. I mean, you could just have a go. If it's mm. out of range, it's out of range, isn't it? So it's like, well. Well, that's true. And, and the other option too is, like I said before, if you've got handgunners, uh, maybe not so much in a detachment, but if you've got a unit of 10 by 2 on a hill, which generally you might not be on your 12-inch line, yep. you might actually, even in ter- even if you you go second, um, yeah. a lot of times things are still too far away because you're not on your 12-inch line. And so yeah, it does yeah. get your chance to at least blip off. Um, a couple. Yeah, a couple. So... Yeah, no, I mean, look, you're going to take it. Like, it's free, so you might as well try it. Um, yeah. Yeah, and then you've got, like, the militia guys. Again, they're all just the same stats. It's just slightly different. So you've got the archers. Um, one one unit, we'll get to this later, they can be, um, I guess, skirmishers. Uh, they're the huntsmen, I think they're called, or what they're called. Um, and so they're sort of skirmish archers. Um, I think the base archers can skirmish as well, I'm pretty yeah. sure. Oh, hang on. So it's scouts, sorry. Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. Okay, the other way around. Sorry. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so you do you elect uh, – it's like anything. They can be skirmishers, but do they have to be archers or can you just deploy in? Nah, yeah, always fight in skirmish formation. Okay, cool. Okay, yeah. so they're always – okay, so it's just those guys. Yep. Um, and then you've got the crossbowmen, which are obviously ranked up. Um, and correct me because I'm not a six, I'm still learning. Is crossbows 30 inch range? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. 30. Yeah. Strength four, just uh, normal. Yeah. But one no AP. AP. Yeah. Yeah. One yeah. AP for the strength. Yeah. Yeah. I always thought crossbowmen were, were state troops until I reread this book. Oh, I did, yeah. And I was yeah. like, oh. In the fluff, they're just militia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a bit weird that uh, you you see, I would have thought militia are just like grabbing random, you know, grabbing random, like, yeah, everyone's got a bow because you live in the empire. Um, but other than that, you're just grabbing random, you know, knives and swords and stuff because you're in the militia, like grabbing something from your back back room. But then you've got crossbowmen in there. Crossbow. Yeah. I would have thought a crossbow, crossbow is quite a, um, I don't know, complex piece of machinery you know what I mean? like it's should be provided by the state i don't yeah it's a bit weird a little bit i mean i the, guess technically it's seen as less technically difficult to shoot than a handgun i guess or even oh a bow. yeah 
but yeah. you sort of mm. point it and pull the trigger. Yeah. But, True. But it is more uh, expensive to maintain. Yeah, I just I imagine they're hard to make, but maybe they're not. Yeah. Um, three <laughs> companies are then just. Uh, I guess it, the fluff reason for the crossbowmen that they say there is just because it's often Talian mercenaries that have been recruited into right. the empire, yeah, so maybe okay. they're just not seen as a core sort of member yeah, of, okay. the, of the nation. Yeah, mm. that makes sense. So they're not technically just coming out from anywhere. They're actually from Tilia a lot of the times, sort of brought, brought in. Yeah. yeah. And then you've got Free Company and they're just – I mean, again, it, it, it's annoying because you can't really see some of the rules, but I think when you get into the army list, are they the guys that basically have two, like, two attackers hand if they've got two hand yeah, weapons? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So this is why I don't like the layouts. Like, what's why would I choose Free Company? Yeah, it doesn't yeah. have anything listed there. <laughs> it's not until the <laughs> army list that you go, oh, okay. I'm in the um, army list firing along. So, yeah. Okay, cool. I'll, awesome. I'll, cover, I'll cover that both. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. So I can see sort of where – they could be useful as well then. Um, and they can be used as detachments and stuff. Yes. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. They're quite cheap. Um, yeah. Well, that's when we thing. get to that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So then, yeah, we go through detachments and then we get into the state troops, like the elite guys. So that's basically mm. two of them. That's the great swords, which uh, weapon skill for. I love, oh, I guess, why do they get, why don't they have, I know they've got great weapons, but why don't, they have initiative four as well, I guess. I don't know. I guess that doesn't really make a difference. They're always hitting. Do great swords hit? Are they? Is that a great weapon? So it's hitting yeah. last anyway. Yeah, yeah, it's hitting last yeah, anyway. So it make I feel like this is. I feel like this is a moot point. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe fluff wise, they're like the um, grizzled veterans, but they've maybe slowed a bit in their yeah. old age. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <Probably>. <laughs> I would have thought you'd graduate up, but maybe it's a totally different skill, probably. I feel like once you go past your mid twenties, your your yeah. initiative value starts <laughs> to drop. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah so, but I mean, obviously, the good thing about them is is stubborn because I guess the you know one of the biggest things we didn't mention, I did touch on it, leadership seven. I mean, ultimately, empire the pretty average leadership when two d six is well, averages is seven. Yeah. Um, yeah, the great swords are probably your only main use of um, you know. Having an you know an unbreak not unbreakable but a fairly stubborn block obviously um, so it sounds like that you know great swords are probably going to be a staple in most competitive army lists I would imagine yeah I just look at yeah, these absolutely. rules yeah. yeah you want to cover the pistol ears Josh because you're a horseman <laughs> <laughs> uh, all about the cavalry yes <laughs> thanks Colin um, yeah the the pistol ears I think these are seen as a as a fairly potent unit. Um, uh, where they're, they're just you guys with uh, dual wielding pistols. I think I think the fluff wise they're supposed to be like young sons of the noblemen or something up on their, their little uh, un, unbarred fast cab horses. Um, they've got the, pretty much the basic human stat line though. They've you know BS three weapons got three threes across the board leadership seven, so they're not really physically special in any mm. particular way. It's more just the fact they're they're you know they're really. Past. They've got the fast cab rule, um, and they've got the fusillade rule, is, which is documented in the start of the book as well. Which is, uh, I think, seen as probably one of the more, more potent special rules in the book. Um, uh, in that they're allowed to dual wield their their pistols in the first round of combat, fire both pistols at once. Um, uh, and, and is that you know, going in at strength four as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah strength yeah. four yeah. armor piercing. Yeah. Um, so two two strength two four attacks. shots. I'm pitching for each of them, yep. um, and I think it specifies as well because I think the leader, the character, if you take your champion that unit, you can give him the repeated yes. pistol. Yeah, we so can get into the other one. Yeah, in, in this um, little paragraph that if it's got a repeated pistol, you can actually attack with his sword as well. So essentially, it ends up with four attacks. Yeah, well, which is okay. quite yeah. potent. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And because they're fast cover, I mean, they're obviously taking out. You know, they're not they're not charging into some huge block. They're charging into other fast cab or, you know, some other small unit or annoying and the you know yeah, war machines. Yeah, yeah. They're going to take them out. Yeah. Yeah, or just on the flank of something as yeah. well. Yeah. You know, um, just as a supporting charge, I think that could do quite yeah. a bit of damage. Well, that's right. They can get in into position with it being fast cab movement eight. Yeah. 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 Which yeah, makes they, them a little could... bit of a target, I think. You know, yes. Oh yeah. They're a little bit squishy. 
Yeah, what's with uh, their save fees? Is it a fiver? Have they got light armor or anything? Well, cool. I can't tell what their equipment is yeah, because it's way back in the end of the book. <laughs> hold, up. hold up, I'm here, I'm here. Where are we? Pistol ears. Uh, light armor. Okay. And so, mounted, yeah. yeah so. so a five up. Yeah. Is that right? Yep. I'm just yeah. assuming these rules. I think they're right. I feel like no, fast, fast cab, you're not going to get much more than a five up. Nah, yeah. Yeah. And then you get onto the nightly order. So this is, um, and obviously some of these, you know, I'm sort of skipping over the stat lines of sort of the characters because we'll get to that when we, the, the character level dudes. Um, so obviously they've got a grandmaster there. But ultimately knights are like the greatsword guys. They're weapon skill four, but then threes. But they've got, and they've got the leadership eight as well. So that's, yeah, they're basically a bit higher than the normal average human. Um and then if they're led by a grandmaster, then they've got immune to psychology as well. So here's another way that you can get with these knightly orders, um, you know, some type of at least better leadership type of combat, you know, in this case immune to psychology, you know, something to com combat you running away a bit. Um, but ultimately, I mean, again, without – I can't see <laughs> – I can't see the other stats, but the, these are one-up <laughs> saves, aren't they, in 6th six, six yeah. edition? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Full plate armor, yeah. shield, yeah. butted walls. Yeah. yeah. So they've pretty much been known to. Empire's always been known to probably have the what the cheapest one-up saves. They're yeah, quite 20, 23 economical. points yeah. a model. Um, that's, yeah, that's very, very cheap for one-up. Yeah. So I um, think, you know, ultimately you're going to see these guys as small little units to, again, get on you know, flanks and out on the – operate out the out the flank, getting flank charges, but also, you know, you can build your army around these things and have quite big blocks of one-up armor save, cav, so. Yeah, and plus three points, you can get um one of the knightly order units can become the knights of yeah, the inner circle. inner circle, yeah. strength four. Strength four, so it's yeah. not – that that's the problem. You end up with these strength three cavalry, and then after the charge, they're just yeah, they're crap. They're just yeah, <laughs> yeah smacking people with <laughs> yeah, their yeah, slapping them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, they they talk a lot about the knightly orders in the fluff here, but I don't think there's any specific rules in the book for them. No. Um, uh, I think I think they did publish some uh, six head rules for like for specific knight uh, orders. Well, that's it's. Interesting um, you bring that up. But in that, White Dwarf, I think it was. Was it? Yeah, okay. Because I was looking at the back of the book uh, and, it, yeah, it talks about the Reek, you know, the Reek Marshal um, and you get the Reek Scarred Knights and I'm like looking through going, well, what are they? Where, are they different? Because I know in 8th they, you know, they were slightly different again. The Reek Scarred, one unit mm. could be Reek Scarred. But you don't get this here, hey? They just. No, no. Yeah, yeah it's, in the, it's in the supplement and I think they've got. Oh, I should have looked this up beforehand. But, yeah, I think we've got enough for eight or – yeah, I think it was six or eight different other orders where they've got specific rules that you you either pay one or two points for or retract a couple of points for, depending on if they're a positive rule or a negative rule. Oh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's, that's actually, cool. yeah. it's actually quite a cool little thing. I think the Rick's Guard are in there. I think you've got Rick's Guard, rules for Rick's Guard on foot, Rick's Guard Knights on foot in there too. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Which are essentially yeah. great swords but with a hand weapon and shield. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, because that's one of the back of the book army. Let's talk about that. For every every um, Reeks Guard knight mounted one, you need a, a foot soldier oh, yeah. one. So, yeah, sure. that's cool. Yeah, so basically you got that. And then um, you then we get into the gunnery skill. So this is obviously, you know, the Empire. Now, so you've seen, you know, you've got these blocks of troops, uh, which, you know, they're quite cheap, so you can have a lot of foot troops whether or not it's you know spears swordsmen great swords but then you got one up armor save knights or you can do a massive gun line as well because they've got you know they've got the great cannons um which is straight out of the army book um the mortars which you can probably touch on actually yeah it does have its own rule so i mean the mortars like a catapult basically but using the big template yeah. it's yeah. but it's just still strength three though yeah but yeah. armor piercing Yep, ah, true. Yep, <laughs> sure. Yep. yep. Um, but no D three wounds though. Like it's interesting. You know, I think we had this conversation a while ago. How yeah, the, um, the partial hits catapults. on the regular yeah. stone throwers are still like was it D three or was it D six? D six, I think. It's it's D6, it doesn't it? say it's yeah. not. Yeah, so it's just um, D six everywhere. Yeah. Whereas the mortar is, I think, yeah. What is it? Strength six, D three wounds under the under hole. the hole. Yeah. But just one strength three arm um, piercing wound. But I do like you never saw mortars in eighth. But I would have thought 
in six. And that, I would probably run one of these just to test it out. Yeah. Um, because, again, with the be way good. partials are done, yeah, like yeah. you would know, Josh, too, having the trebuchet. Um, I mean, you pretty much can easily touch a whole unit if you <laughs> land on something because it's, you know, um, just having a partial, even yeah. just touching it means at least you get a chance to hit it. Now, the negative is it's strength three, so it depends on what you're obviously firing at. Um, yeah, I mean, but it's a five-inch. I've never had the pleasure of using the five-inch template. Oh, I thought, I thought the trebuchet does. No. In, oh, is no. It th- oh, okay. Did it ever do a big no. one? Uh, what am I getting confused with? What What else did know. a five, the five-inch one? That's a war machine. Ooh. Is there a Chaos the, Dwarf one that has a five-inch? What's uh, the, uh, the Hell Cannon, the Chaos? Maybe it is. Maybe that's what that I'm getting confused. I thought one? the trebuchet did, but. I'm getting it confused then. Okay, uh, cool. I think no. the oh, I don't know if it was the Earth Shaker Cannon, one of the Chaos. Maybe it's one oh, of yeah, those. the Earth Shaker too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That slows you down. Yeah. So yeah. and in eighth is the mortar strength two as well or not? Was it three? Oh, I'm not sure. Can't remember. I just remember it was bad. I don't know. You never saw it. I feel like it'd be more accurate in eighth because you didn't have to guess the range. Yeah. Well, that's why I thought they might have dropped it. I wouldn't be surprised if they dropped the strength. I just can't remember. Just to balance it's funny that. where you don't. Yeah. Just yeah, that'll be. Yeah. 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 I feel like you <clears> would <throat> see it a bit. I don't know. I haven't actually had the pleasure of playing an Empire Army in six. That's a weird That's way it. of saying it. I want to see what the mortar does, and I haven't had the pleasure of playing against it. <laughs> <laughs> Getting shot at. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty cheap, though. It's 75 points. It's, yeah. it's, it's not. It wouldn't I mean, be that it depends hard on who you're there. playing, hey. Like, I mean, if you're hitting Skaven or other humans or goblins, I mean, geez, you could do some damage. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. With the AP in there. Like you said it's AP, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. 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 Or elves. I mean, God. Yeah, yeah, Imagine yeah. firing this at pie elves. Wipe yeah. them out. Yeah. yeah. No, you would. And even if you scatter, <laughs> half the time you scatter, you're still probably hitting as much as a stone thrower. Yeah. So, yeah, because yeah. the stone for I find if you scatter off a bit, yeah, it's like that's yeah, it. you're you know, in trouble. You're not, yeah. you're not hitting anything. Maybe one or two partials. Yeah, yeah. maybe you kill a couple of a skeleton <clears throat> bowmen, maybe <throat> two just on the edge of a unit in the combat, and <laughs> yeah, and kill the rest of them to a man in combat. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Yeah. Referring to something. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Let's <laughs> not so talk about this. <laughs> um, that was my fault. Didn't bring a standard. Um, <laughs> <laughs> The um, actually going on to the next one though the other uh, you know that's so they've got those the mortar and the great cannon and then squish between the next well, this book is just laid out weird <laughs> squish yeah. between the next gun is the master engineer um, oh, which yeah. is interesting but because um, I was going to mention the master engineer because yes the five inch template can scatter, but because it's so big and you might want to be trying to, you know, land on something really big and squishy, that's where I, you know, having that master engineer potentially, I don't know about points if it's worth it, but being able to re-roll that scatter dice suddenly makes that even more scarier if you can actually yeah. get it. Mm. They're pretty think, expensive, but those engineers. Yeah, that's the, what are they? They used to be 65. They're, they're, fif- they're 55 points. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. Which... Oh, yeah. I'd love to be able to justify putting them in army. And I think if I've ever run Empire, I'd love to put an engineer in. because I think I've got him in my 2000 I, feel like, I was playing around with that I want to play against Andrew. I feel with, like the but... prevailing um, thought process from mm. back in those days was that Wasn't a second Wartar is more valuable than an engineer that might yeah, give you a re-roll. Like yeah. re-roll. Or you might re-roll and then get a misfire and then everything dies. Anyway, you lose your engineer then as well as so the mortar. So you just get two mortars instead, yeah. And where does the mortar set just special, hey? So you potentially yeah, could yeah. fit more in. Yeah. That's a good point. The only yeah. thing is, but then the master engineer, he's the dude that can have like the 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 sniper rifle. Yeah, you can. So, you know. But, mm. but if you use his reroll, no, you, yeah, you can't do that, yeah. But I I think it yeah I think it would be fun yeah. to have the sniper. Yeah. Because um, you can put the sniper on the handgunners as well. On the um, oh, on the champion. champ, yes, that's right. You probably get it in there. That's pretty get value few... anyway. Yeah, well, the more the better, though. <laughs> oh, true. No, true. Yep. yep. Uh, anyway, that must we're, be we're... why. Yeah, we're yeah. jumping ahead on some of the strategies there, but yeah, that's the the crossbow unit I'm painting up. I didn't. I bought them secondhand, and the champions got 
a sniper rifle. He's also got a skeleton a head. Unit? Yeah, so I think he was probably from like a he... handgun unit. Yeah, they've yeah put yeah. him in. Um, but they've used skeleton head, not a human head. <laughs> but I decided to leave it on there just for fun. <laughs> so, anyway, that's totally off topic. Um, so is that the only thing the master engineer does? Oh, he acts as an extra crewman. Wow. Yeah. And he, I don't think he, he can't join the, the um, hell blaster. Hell blaster. Yeah. 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 And so then the hell blaster comes up, which is another one of these unique sort of empire ones. Um, how does this go versus the dwarf one? So the, the idea with this one is you roll the artillery dice yeah, once you keep rolling. and you keep rolling it, but only up to three times. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. I, I don't like it personally, but yeah. Yeah, I like the eighth. Just roll three dice and see what happens. Yeah. This is a bit weird. And then it's like, what, half? But the interesting thing with this, it's auto hit. Yeah. You don't roll to hit with this thing, which you, yeah, you have to roll you to don't. hit with. Did you have to roll to hit with the eighth one? No. Yeah, you did, oh, didn't you? Sorry. With the eighth, oh, yeah, yeah. I think sorry. I did, but you got the full amount. Like if you rolled three tens, it's 30 shots, and then you rolled a hit, didn't you? Was there modifiers to hit then? So you roll. Uh, then now I can't remember. I'm pretty sure you sure rolled enough. a hit, but yeah. I don't think it was a multi shot thing or anything like that. Nah, yeah, dwarfs you definitely roll to hit as well. Fair enough. In eight, oh, you do. Oh, so you do. Oh, in eighth, you do, but yeah, not in, in eight, not in yeah. six. Yeah, no, not in no, six. No. no, six is yeah. just your hits. Yeah, but then you then it's by half if it's at long range. Like, yes, because the yeah, range yeah. is what 24 inches. Uh, I think so. Yeah. Yes, yep, yeah, yep, there yeah, it is. And, or it's half artillery dice at strength four, otherwise, it's strength five. Artillery dice at short range, minus yeah. three to the save. So it's pretty deadly, but yeah, it's just I don't know the chance. I feel like there's a fairly high probability of misfiring, or maybe that's just in my because you're rolling three dice one at a time. I feel like yeah, <laughs> I feel like it's like when you know when you're playing the pokies and you're like bet on black, bet on black. Oh shit, I hit red. You know, like <laughs> it's like <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, so you roll one by one, then you hit. Then if you roll a misfire, you go to the chart immediately. Yeah, right. yeah. And then what is it? One to two, the whole thing's destroyed. Do you still yeah. sh- get the shots if it's destroyed, or is no, that yeah. sure it's not that first so you one? Do. But the others you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. it's it's not like as bad as a normal misfire chart. Yeah, and then you could roll yeah. a six, and then you get all of them. Yeah, what is yeah. it? Yeah, the barrel. Yeah, the barrel you're rolling for, and any remaining barrels in the deck all score ten hits or five yeah. along range, and then you yeah. can find all the next one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then like a dud, which is a five, that, that barrel doesn't fire, but then you can keep going. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, the, then, the problem is you're rolling one dice. It just feels like to fire this thing, you might be rolling up to like three or four or five dice, you know, like if one of them's misfire, then you roll D6. Oh, yeah, I can keep going now, roll the next. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's one of these things where it's cool when they did it, but it's not a, a very clunky. Um, yeah. clunky, yeah. yeah. It's three um, three rolls, isn't it, per shot? Like you yeah. roll the dice three times. Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying like I say you misfire on the first one. Now you've got to roll D6 to do the misfire. And then if you don't blow it up, you can then roll your second artillery dice. Yeah. And then you, th- you know, that's just a lot of single dice rolling. Just a bit, a bit frustrating. Yeah. I don't mind it. I don't. It's just <laughs> suspense. I think it's a bit of, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I like the eighth that it's just throw three dice down and see what happens. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, but look, it's worth. I mean, I'm, I'm ha- I love the model. Um, I've got the really old school one, but I've got the new one as well. It looks well, like they look good and powerful. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Are they are they one of these things like the organ gun where most of the time they don't do anything or they get killed, but they everyone focuses on trying to get rid of them. Yeah, my organ well, I think gun. They've got a lot of potential. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, they hmm. do. But if you go I mean, if you get into short range or you, know, you just ignore it. I think it's because yeah. everyone focuses on it. That's why they never do anything. Yeah, it? probably. That's but it, it, the fact end, that you don't have to roll to hit. Like you, Empire, are crap. Ballistic skill three. It's nice to know that this thing just <laughs> it just hits on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel like just its presence affects how your opponent yeah. approaches your totally. battle line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I I don't know. I I don't think I'd bring one again for a while. Mm. An organ I, gun I, or a hell blaster? No, no, well, organ gun. Oh, right. I'd it but it's, it does, the, does the that, organ oh, okay. gun in six it's the same sort work? Of thing, but... Same, pretty much. Oh, what's well, the difference? well, just similar sort of damage output. Like it's a similar concept. Um, yeah. So you 
you know, it's it's something where you're going to be able to take off knights or take off an armored character or or something like that. Like it's got that potential. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's sort of it's very situational. Um, yeah, you can and, misfire pretty easily, right? Well, yeah. Well, the the end of the day, like I'm talking just organ gun, but um, <clears throat> but it's the same, very similar concept. But I mean, what what's your average going to be like? Maybe five hits. Um, with the range, you know, you you might only get one or two chances to fire. Um, mm. so it's not. Yeah, I I didn't find it that great. I mean, people talk about them being these like OP things. I don't think they're OP. They can do well, but I mean, the only time I shot well with mine. Um, they got saved, so it was just like, well, mm, yeah, it's just sort of, yeah, yeah. Anyway, well, I'm definitely keen to try one out, but yeah, yeah. Let's see, and then uh, then it goes into Warrior Priest Sigma. I love Warrior Priest. I love the I love the figures. Um, I love the idea, especially from Eighth. They were like must take, um, but in this edition, I don't know, a bit underwhelming. I don't know what you guys think. So what it like, should describe what they do. Um, they're like a little buff hero, basically. They're two two attacks, two wounds, you know, weapon skill four, strength four, tough four. Um, so in terms of humans, they're just a, a good little hero level guy. Um, then they get the Blessing of Sigma, which is basically they're adding a dispel dice. So that's cool. Like I guess yeah. uh, you know, we'll get into magic down the track, but um, – yeah, depending on your build, if you want to go real defensive heavy, this is a way to get more dispel dice, I guess. Um, then they have – I don't really like these ones where the rule of Righteous Fury, um, they hate all – the Warrior Priest and the unit hates all models in the following armies. <laughs> Chaos Warriors, Beastmen, yeah, Demons, yeah. Chaos Dwarves, Undead, Skaven, which is cool, but – It's situational. It's, lot, yeah, yeah, I mean – it feels like one of these things where it's like if your mate always played Skaven, yeah, yeah. you'd always be taking this. But, you know, the tournament, yeah. it's hard, you know. Um, what's so what's he saying? That this power does not affect other characters and units of psychology are not affected by the power as well. So funny. I, that's a weird thing when they do that. Like I see immune psychology as being, um, you know, you're, you're brave. You're not you're not dumb. Like yeah, yeah. if someone's here to pump you up, you should still be able to, I don't know, get that benefit. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah. It's a weird um, limitation. Yeah. Um, and then the prayers. So this is the other, so this is one of the other sort of army special rules, I guess, um, where they get to once per magic phase, uh, allowed to use one prayers. If it's a bound spell, power level three can be cast on, themselves or this is the other this is the worst part about it or any one character or unit champion within 12 inches of the the priest um can't be uh, a knight of the white wolf though it's got to be a sigma follower basically yep. um yeah i don't know but the problem is now so the prayers just go through them uh the model can reroll fail hits to wound um the another one is the model gets a five plus ward save uh, healing hand is they get a wound back or soul fire is you put the, this one's probably the most useful. I feel like you put the five inch template over the warrior priest and all undead and demons under it, get, get a strength four hit. Um, no armor save allowed. No armor save. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Now, I don't know. What do you guys think about this and what do you think is the biggest downfall? Well, I'm sorry. I shouldn't say downfall. You might love, you might love them. I don't know. I feel like it's very limited. In fact, you can only target one model at a time. Yes, yeah. Because it isn't eighth, yeah. it's the unit they're in. Yeah. Yeah, it feels like such a good idea, but, like, why do I want to buff up my unit champ? <laughs> like, yeah, you can get to re-roll a male, maybe one or two fail to and rune it, rolls off a champion. And like, healing hand's useless. I can't cast that on a champion because if he's got a wound, he's dead. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's like, I don't know, it just... And it's only range miss. twelve. Like healing yeah. hand is, oh, I can't imagine how many times that might have actually come off and been handy, except unless yeah. he's casting it on himself, basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and again, like rerolling your hits failed. Like you've got two attacks. Like the, it's just such. It's a shame because it's a good. Um, this is 
one of the worst ones, at least when I'm coming from eighth, going back to six, I'm like, ah, damn, I love the warrior priest. I love my warrior priest model. Um, and I probably wouldn't take one. I guess the only way, if you can keep him nearby, like whatever your general you have, like electric mm. hound or Templar or something, yeah, you give him either the rerolls to wound or the the ward save, you know. And this remains in play, so you can sort of get it going and then just let well, it. Well, the sit other prayers there. are so useless, so maybe you just do it. That's sort yeah, of you know, so it'd be a way of buffing your general, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's probably true. all I can see you doing with it. Yeah, well, it's power level threat. It's not like you know, it's it's not the. Yeah, you just throw a dice at it each turn. Yeah, and you get it. You well, got it. Yeah. Yeah. It's you of... don't need to use dice to cut, isn't it? Oh, sorry, to, sorry. To bounce I think, spell. Sorry, yeah, bounce. Oh, but to, goes off, yeah. just to dispel it, but like it's not. It's not hard to get rid of. Not hard to no, get rid no. of, but it does draw an extra dice. Yeah. You know, and if you're trying to cast other spells, it'll help with that, I suppose. Mm. And if they throw one dice at it, they might fail to dispel it anyway. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All a one or a two. I agree. It's very limited in use. <laughs> Again, like, and, and look, you know, when you come from thinking about tournaments, it's where it falls over. If if you're playing thematic or narrative and stuff like this, I mean, they're probably awesome. Like if I was doing a narrative army versus this versus vamps, man, I'd probably bring some of these dudes and I'd be probably casting Soulfire on when I'm in. Because they're going to end up, you always put them in a unit. They probably will be in combat yeah. at some point. And then, yeah. you know. So I don't know, and you can put them on hawk. Can you? Uh, you can, yeah, you can. Can put you them mount in, them as well? Because that's what I've got one of my guys I'm mounted. Really sure you can. You can put them in a <laughs> yeah. unit of knights or whatever, and and have them. Yeah, go around and do their five inch template on, on undead. It's pretty yeah, good. That would hurt. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, and then now, so you say flagellance, and I say flagellance. Right, there you go. I don't know the pronunciation. <laughs> Yeah, because don't you, Flag- you fl- fl- flagellate? Yeah, flagellate. Is that, yeah. I thought it was from flay, like. It is, you flagellate, yeah. but I don't know. Yeah. I've heard flagellants as well. So I, yeah. I, I pronounce a lot of words wrong, so don't back me. Oh, so do I. So, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, these guys are basically the um, crazy psycho Sigma followers who definitely know the end of the world's coming. <clears throat> so these guys were right all along, basically. Um, yeah, they were trying to tell us. Yeah. The end is nigh. True. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but basically, they're like worse humans in the sense got worse weapon skill, but better toughness, two attacks. Um, but yeah, totally. I mean, again, in an army that doesn't have great leadership, these guys uh, will die. Well, toughness falls, you know, better than humans, but no armor. But at least not gonna not gonna ever run away. Mm. So. I like how their special rule is is clearly written before the concept of an unbreakable rule yeah, was sort yes. of had been yeah. properly published. Yeah. Because it literally just says, yeah, immune psychology, never take brave tests, or automatically pass any and all leadership tests are required to take. Yeah. yeah. Cannot flee. Always pursue a broken enemy. Yeah. I know. Yeah, totally. Yeah. They're, uh, and they're cool models. Um, I don't think I've ever used them. In eighth, um, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, eighth had a lot more toys to play with. True, true. The eighth one's interesting too because they had an extra rule. Now, what was it? Do you, oh, yes, in eighth. Do you know what they had in eighth as their rule? No. Ah, it's actually really cool. <laughs> You'd have to field bigger units, typical. Oh, shame that didn't fashion. convince you to actually take them in eighth edition. Yeah, and I've got two boxes of them, and I never looked at them. Um, <laughs> So basically what happens is every time they are in combat, uh, they, at the start of the, so this is an eighth edition rule, sorry, everyone who's listening. Um, at the start of the close combat phase, flagellants automatically suffer D6 strength three hits um, that don't count towards combat res. But if at least one model dies, then you roll a D6. On a one, it's the unit rerolls all its hit rolls. On a two or three, they reroll all their two hit and two wounds and on a four up they get a plus one toughness and reroll all fail two hits and two wounds now admittedly they're tough three in this edition um but it's interesting a bigger unit um so they can take that d6 uh you know strength three hits but yep. then they're they're basically rerolling the hit and wound all the time pretty much unless you roll a one um so yeah they could probably dish out a little bit of damage before they die oh, that's so interesting because oh, yeah. 
that's funny. I've actually got the seventh edition book here. Oh, yeah. I, I accidentally bought it when I was trying to find the six seven book. Okay, yeah. <laughs> last well, year. That's probably what I did originally. And it's, yeah. and it's got a similar thing, but it's uh, it's a it's a choice. You can choose to sacrifice D three ah, martyrs. I like that. That's sort of like the uh, dark elf thing. Yeah, and and it's a similar pro- effect though. Like you know, if you roll a one, you lose one martyr, and they hate elf enemies too. Reroll fail to wounds and three and add one extra combat red score and it's cumulative. So the higher you roll, the more guys sacrifice themselves <laughs> and the more buffs, more buffs you get for the unit. Oh yeah, ah. yeah, yeah, it's really good. Well, it's interesting because seventh edition is known as a little bit of uh, power creep, hey, in the army books. Is that right? Yeah, but I feel like orcs and goblins and empire were released pretty early on before the power creep ah. became. Really I mean, bad. Look at this. Oh, that's Warrior Priest. I was looking at the wrong stats there. Okay. So on. I think I think there's some I feel like there's some people feel like the Empire and Orc and Goblin books aren't that, bad. Oh, that bad. They could almost, almost fit in, they could almost get away with it in six if you wanted to, yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. Um uh, it was really when yeah, the what Dark Elves and Demons and all that stuff yeah, came well, out that and in the in. end, it was just went crazy. Okay, so yeah, that's an interesting one. Yeah, but they're back to tough three. Um Okay, cool. I think I like. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. They look. They're. I'm. I'm gonna. I want to play with them. I want to try them out just to have a little oh, yeah, unbreakable unit. But um, and they're down to one one attack as well. Because they're oh, two true. attacks. They're two yes. attacking sticks. So they're almost slightly more, technically more survivable and a little bit more output. They're, are they two attacks in eighth and seventh? I thought it was one attack in seventh. Yeah. So they're technically a little bit more. Yeah, um, tough three. Yeah. They're a little bit more sort of uh, no random unity in it. It's just they're unbreakable, basically, two attacks in a tough four. So, I mean, you can throw things. They're probably not going to do. They've got weapons got two, so it's a bit annoying. But the flail, um, yeah. I think they're good. I think they're, I think they're gold, actually. Now, is the flail plus two and then plus one? How does that work? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Is that, that, is that that one where it's plus two in the first was... round of combat and then plus one after that or something? The cavalry it was plus hammer two is... only. Oh, plus is that two that? And then nothing. Yeah, that might be uh, that. I'm probably getting mixed with the cav hammer, which is on in this book too, actually. Somewhere. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. No, yep. Just two plus two in the first turn only. Yeah. Okay. Cool. <clears throat> yeah. So, and they don't have to charge. They can be charged and still be plus two with yep. a flail. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yep. Then you yeah. just get tired from wielding it and then yeah. your strength fails. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then we get, uh, we've got Griffins and Pegasi. I mean, I don't know if we need to go through much. They're just standard stuff. Yeah. They're just nothing really crazy there. Then we just got the Empire Armory, um, full plate armor. We talked about that. I mean, that gets that's how you get to that one plus save. Oh, the Cav Hammer. There we are. Yeah, so just, that's uh, just mentioned that. <laughs> yeah. So that's the Knights of the White Wolf. Uh, so they get the plus two strength bonus in first turn and then plus one after that. So that, I mean, that's pretty cool. Although it does require yeah. the two hands. So that's why they've only got a, a two up save, I'd imagine, I'm guessing. Yeah. 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 Um, good. Still, still really good. Yeah. No, I think it's. Um, I think it's good. Um, Empire Handgun, we were talked about that one. That's got the volley yeah. fire, which is the extra D6 on their first shot. And then, yeah, yeah. then we got the sniper rifle, which is um, – so that can be – so it's it's the champion of the handgunners, you're saying, can take yep. it, and yeah. then the master engineer. I think, I think the champion can take any of the <laughs> following three weapons. Oh, okay, repeat a handgun his, and yeah. repeat a pistol. Okay, yeah. Yep. So, yeah, the Hockland Long Rifles, 36 inches strength for armor piercing, so minus two. Um, but you can basically pick out <clears throat> anyone in that range. Um, mm. But he does a minus one to hit if he does that, but he doesn't suffer minus one for shooting at a single character. Yeah. yeah. So I guess that's where, am I right in, what's the ballistic skill of if you just uh, put it on a champ? I think like. it was four. I think the engineer and the champ are both four. Oh, okay. I think. So then you're essentially trying to hit on a four if you're in short yeah. range, which would be eighteen inches. Or yeah. Or fives if you're at long range. Yeah. That's why I feel like if you're going to do it, you sort of need two. Yes. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. 
But, you, you know, you never know. Like it's one of those things, isn't it, that you get one wound off on, say, a hero or even on a Lord character, they start getting a bit more defensive. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. I feel like yeah. mage picking off would be a good use for this yeah. too. You yeah. Know? yeah. 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 Um, makes you a bit scared to do a miscast once you've got down to one. Mm. Yeah. And then these other ones are more repeated ones. So, um, and you guys can answer this, I guess. That when it says, um, or the hang on, so the repeater handgun, that's 24 inch strength four, it's three multiple shots, arm piercing. So that's basically just three shots. Um, are you, do you get, is there a minus one for multiple shots? That's an eighth rule. No, there it? is. Oh, there yeah. is as well. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There is a special rule for that. And I would imagine that these two guns are affected by it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's the problem. I mean, they sound cool, but then you just, you end up hitting on fives and sixes. Yeah. Three shots, yeah. but. Still. Yeah, three shots. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> if you can, you know, if, if you're getting in. With pistol ears, you're going to be in close range anyway. Oh yeah, so. that's I'm, yeah. Sorry, I'm I'm sort of thinking from the point of view of this empire uh, engineer or a champ. Oh yeah, it's yeah, a bit yeah. Less likely. Yeah, no, the the pistol and the handgun's good on the pistol ears. I think that's cool. Mm, yeah, I guess the way you look at the minus one with the I can repeat a handgun on a champ is that it essentially brings him back to BS three. You know, yeah. So yeah. essentially, like having three shots, three normal guys versus one from the champ. Yeah. 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 And then um, I said the pistol can be done in close combat as well. So that's where you get that at, at, uh, additional attacks of strength four with minus two armor piercing in the first round of combat. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think you can f- keep firing it. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Just the one. But you're saying you get those three and then you also get your attack. Um, yeah. The fusillade rule. Yeah. yeah you get yeah. those three and you can also use a sword. Yeah, yeah. So essentially cool. it goes to four attacks, which is <clears throat> yeah, pretty cool. Right. So then we get on to the – so we did the Empire Armory. Now we're on to the Treasure Vaults. So this is all the, the magic uh, weapons and stuff. Obviously they've got access to the common magic items, so we're not going to go through that. They, they've actually got a fair few. I don't know if that's, again, typical of six edition books or not, but there's a fair few in here. So we probably won't go through every one. Um do you want to just, Andrew, take us through magic weapons maybe and maybe just yeah. touch on the ones that you think are probably not yeah, I'll, I'll, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just touch on, you know, some of them. Uh, so Room Fangs, you know, 100 points, a lot of points you're really going to be spending on this. Um, so hits automatically, no armor save allowed. Um, yeah, it's great. Um, 100 points, great. Yeah, it's sort of, I, I don't know. To me, that's a little bit too expensive. Yeah. Um, so the Mesa holds. It's a, it's a classic, classic um, sort of uh, magic item, though, in terms of the lore. But it's just, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a shame well, that's that, it. yeah. The only thing with it, though, is <clears throat> uh, you know you've already got a one-up save. You know, if you're maxed out with your normal, uh, you know, like your normal armor, but you're yeah. going in with this thing that's all hits automatically, wounds, pretty good. Yeah. Well, that's I, it. I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, so all hits wound. You're thinking, all right, you'd come in at. It uh, just depends on who you're going up against, I yeah. suppose. But yeah, yeah, you might be getting two two wounds off, you know, a, a turn or a round of combat. So yeah, like uh, I don't know, it's hundred points. <laughs> it's a yeah, it's, yeah, it's a lot. It's a big commitment. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so yeah, most of the Helmstrom. Um, so the bearer can fulfil all his normal attacks to make only one attack. Um, so roll dead as normal. This one attack hits, then resolve at strength ten causes d6 wounds. Um, again, uh, situational. Like if you're up against monsters and you know monstrous infantry things like that, yeah, it can be good. Or if you can if you can pick your combats, um, I, I think it's good. Um, but yeah, it's kind of one of those situational uh, weapons as well. Um, sort of fate, 50 points. So at the beginning of the battle, nominate one enemy monster. Must be a large target or an enemy character. The sword normally counts as a magic sword with no particular bonuses, but the attacks direct against the desired target will wound on a 2 plus and cause D3 wounds with no armor saves allowed. Again, same sort of thing. Very situational. Um, I don't really like these sorts of weapons where you can pick something unless you do have that mobility. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you're on a flying monster or something like that um, and you can get into that combat and pick your 
combat, then yeah, they, they can be they can be good. Um, sort of uh, Sigismund, um, the world are um, of this sort as plus one strength and always strikes first in combat. Um, even before enemies that have charged, um, if the bear is fighting another enemy who is uh, entitled to strike first um, because of spells, special abilities, etc., then resolves attack um, in initiative order. If initiative values are equal, then roll a dice to determine who strikes first. I actually do like these um, strike first in combats um, mm. just because, yeah, it depends on your unit who you're going to put it on. But, um, you know, if you start taking people out of that first rank and they can't strike back, that, that is a really big deal in 6th edition. Um, so, yeah, I, I do like that. Again, it, it depends on what unit you're going to put it on. Um, what, what do you guys think about that? Well, it's only plus one strength. Um, <clears throat> and this is the Sigismund. Sigismund yeah, line, yeah. Right? yeah. The, I Sigismund. mean, the problem is it's 50 points too. Like, I yeah. think, because um, mm. is it heroes? They're only 50, isn't it? And then the elector count would be 100. Is that how? Yep. Oh, I'd be guessing yeah. so, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I'd, I don't think I'd take it. I just, overall, I don't want to jump into strategy, but I just, I just don't know how offensively powered you can make these characters unless they're very niche, like, you know, like, um, for example, a peg knight, like putting a captain on a peg and he sort of can operate by himself and get charges off he wants. If he can't, then I don't know. Yeah, but if he's charging in, then the uh, usefulness of always strike first becomes a limited, limited anyway. If he's getting bogged down, that's a disaster for the peg knight. Well, that's it. If he's mounted, there's pretty much no point. Point, Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um. So, so it'd, yeah. be, it'd be for like if you had an elliptic count in the front rank of a swordsman unit or something. So we yeah, yeah. Get, in, get in, take out a few guys, and but see, just yeah. reduce how many attacks are coming in against the, the unit. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, going on, sort of righteous steel, forty-five points. Uh, the water always hits any opponent on two plus, regardless of weapon skill. Mm. Um, this cannot be modified in any way. Uh, Look, I, I don't mind it, but you're mostly going to be hitting on threes anyway. It depends on who you're up against. Um, but, mm, do you, you reckon? Know. That's the thing. That's, I don't mind. I, I always find, yeah. but I guess if you're hitting this, you've only then got strength four. Hey, that's well, the that's problem. Strength. That's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the problem with that's these the ones. Problem. You just don't get yeah. any penetration. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No strength, no armor pierce. You know, it's just, no AP buff. Yeah. I just find that. It's a lot harder to hit people, so I was just wondering. I wonder if that one again. I'm jumping ahead here because I don't know, but is could this be? Is there any magic that you know buffs strength or things like that, and then characters can use this to auto hit? I don't know. Like, is there some type of combination there a bit more? Um, but again, I just don't know how offensive these characters are. <laughs> so I don't know how useful they are. Yeah, if you've got yeah. three attacks or two attacks. Who cares if you're hitting on two up and then you? Wounding on a like a strength four, which is bugger all. Yeah. So. Um. So yeah, coming up, sort of power. I, I think this is pretty good for forty points. So, just a standard plus two strength to all close combat attacks. Mm. Um. So again, it's like yeah, all right. You could take a great weapon, um, but if you're going to be getting in earlier, it's it's yeah. just it, it's it's something cheaper. So if you can get something like this in with um, you know, some sort of armor buff or this is where you're just getting to those sorts of things where it is. But like, is this good on a night affordable. when you're, you know, you like you now you're hitting on plus two strength all the time and you've got a one up save, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Compared to your normal, uh, what what is it, the cavalry hammer, which is plus two, mm. but then goes down to plus one. Mm. So yeah, well, that's 40. yeah, but the cav hammer is only the um the Ulrich ones too. So yeah. you can't just take that normally. But yeah, if you're normal, yeah, yeah. You know. And it's a two handed the cab hammer. So yes. you know, you're yeah, only so you've only got two. Yeah. Yeah. So and this you can wield the shield. So like this is pretty you put like it again, depending on the thing, if you've got again, this could be an option for say a, a captain person on a Pegasus or something where can he I don't know if they can get a two up on the Pegasus, but um a one up, but if they mm. can or close to it, then you've got plus two strength as well all the time. Like you've, yeah. you've sort of got maybe. the best yeah. both worlds a bit, it's a, maybe. It's a versatile weapon. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> and it's not super expensive. Like you got no, room to yeah. tinker. You can even throw another 10. I like the ones where you've got enough points maybe to, yeah, add one for a little thing. Add an yeah. enchanted shield or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Um, where are we up to? Uh, Hammer of Judgment. So 35 points. Um, model was hit by this hammer. Must take a leadership test for every hit suffered. If the test has failed, the hit wounds automatically. No armor save is allowed. If the test is passed, uh, roll to wound and take armor saves as normal. Uh, just I wouldn't pick it just because I don't want to be rolling that many dice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's one of those situational things, isn't it? Like, yeah, it's, it's interesting, of, though. Like, yeah, uh, if you knew who you're up against, and they had like a low leadership army, maybe. Yeah, it's pretty um, situational. Yeah. Uh, Dragon bow coming in thirty points, uh, range thirty six, strength six. Uh, hits from the bow count as being a magical weapon. Uh, not a huge fan, unless you need magical hits. Um, yeah, it, banshees. Yeah, well, that's it. I mean, it's only there's no sort of like multi wounds. It's only one strength six hit. Mm. Um, yeah. What's your um BS on your electric count? Oh, I don't know. I'm guessing hits? four, but yeah, <clears throat> I'd be thinking four or five. Four. Yeah. Are they five? No, they BS five. Oh, five. Okay. There so maybe. Yeah. Still not great. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, that's it. It's taking points away from other stuff. And I mean, is he just going to sit back and shoot or? Yeah. Yeah. Um, sort yeah, of yeah. justice. I feel like you'd give it to him and he'd just be sitting there in a block shooting until the guy, until your opponent got to, got to him, you know? But yeah. It gives yeah. him something to do for a couple of turns, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, reroll fail to wounds. Not too bad for 25 points, I reckon. Um, if you're just going to throw out a normal hero. Um, that sort of probably in your hero sort of style. Oh, I think that'd be good for an infantry buff if you're going to have that on a on a hero, or maybe give him a, you know, some protection with a yeah. armor or something like that. Yeah. Again, I'd I think I feel like I still were rather a strength buff than rerolls to wounds at strength four. You know, I just feel like it's always something more useful, even one more. Strength. Yeah. Well, that's it. That's where you'd be going back to. Uh, sort of might is similar price, twenty points yeah. for yeah. Plus yeah. One I strength. feel like yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, because then you're going to be getting the extra AP, really, wouldn't you? Mm. Um, so yeah, the last one there is the Worm Slayer Sword, twenty points. Um, hits from the sword wound any opponent on roll of four plus, unless the wielder's strength would make this less. Arm um, saves apply as normal, modified uh, by the strength of the character, but large targets lose their armor save due to the scaly skin skin special ability against hits from this sword. So. So situation, I don't know. Yeah, know. Just... if you're chasing dragons um... again, if I'm cha- I'm not I'm not sending my human in to kill the dragon. I'm, that's what I'm using the cannon for and stuff. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's not eight yeah. editions. So who knows? Yeah. yeah. So I, I don't know. Like out of the weapons, well, there's some there's some pretty good stuff, but yeah, nothing. There's no auto takes. I don't think out of that. Um, sort of power I liked. I think that was pretty good. Forty points. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So moving on to. Magic armor, <laughs> weapons. Sorry, um, the first one is the gilded armor, which I don't think I've really seen much of. Which is it's a fifty point armor. It counts as heavy armor, um, uh, and units or models attacking the wearer in close combat must pass a strength test before rolling to hit for each attack directed at the target. Um, if the attack, if the test is failed, the attack is lost. <laughs> yeah, right. which is interesting, but. I feel like it's sort of limited. The higher the strength is, the less likely are to fail it. Yeah, yeah. unless they're on the six. Like, the more damage they're going to do when they hit you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's a bit it's a bit of a counterintuitive item. Yeah. Um, the one following that, the Dawn Armor, is 40 points, which I feel like is this one's going to be more useful. It's it's a full plate armor, so four up, say, face, um, and you can re-roll failed armor saves. Yeah. And like oh, I feel yeah. like that's just always going to be useful. Yeah, that's good. Um, and it can be combined with other equipment normally. So basically, you put this got. So I'm guessing you put this on a, a knight, and you got. Well, how does that work? Is that a four up? What's up? Well, you can give him a shield. one up. That's what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, but a bartered steed, Absolutely. one up re-rollable then forty. Yeah, so it's yeah, one up so re-rollable. Yeah, yeah, I think that's good. Yeah, yeah. it's a really yeah. useful one. Um, armor of Tarnus is thirty five points. It's a bit more situational. It's light armor. Um, and yeah, it can be combined with other equipment as previously. Um, uh, gives him a five up ward save though, and wizards can wear this armor and cast spells. Okay. Yeah, yeah okay. so it's yeah. a way of giving a wizard a five up uh, ward. 
That's pretty good. The, with 30, his little six up save. Yeah, well. a little, a little. <laughs> It'll come in handy one day. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Thirty-five points though, so it is. It's a fair investment in a ward save if you've only got like hero level casters. Yeah. You know, yeah. Maybe yeah. you put it on yeah. a lord. Yeah. But it's otherwise quite a bit of points, and it sort of limits your ability to take other arcane items. Yeah. Um, uh, then you've got the Shield of Gorgon, which is also 35 points. Um, uh, so this is, yeah, six up armor sh- save shield, so regular shield. Uh, the, wear- the wearer can force one model in base contact to lose one attack. Um, uh, and then there's a caveat that in the case of models with different attacks or special attacks, uh, they can't like, be lost. They, yeah, they're right? not really lost. Yeah, like yeah. giants and that type of thing doesn't really affect them. It's a bit um, random. Yeah, so it's a bit it's a bit weird. It's hard to quanti- or quantify how valuable that is. Yeah, yeah. Right? Um uh on this armor of Metoric Iron for 30 points. This is probably one of the most popular armor so armors chosen. I've got a yeah. question on this, because yeah. um am I right in if if I had a captain or whatever it's called with this and he's a BSB, you can't have a magic banner then. Is that how it works in six? Did I, yes, I'm pretty cause, sure. Because I haven't used specific playing caveat. Tomb Kings, I never use the Herald. Um, I thought something was somewhere in six where if the BSB had a magic banner, they can't then take other items. Because in eighth, this was my go to for my BSB. Yeah, you I can't take to... any other items. Yeah. Yeah. If you've got a banner, was, that's it. Yeah. But in eighth, it was good. You'd put this guy, BSB, one plus armor, and then you'd, you'd obviously use a banner as well or have some type of magic banner. But. Um, I'd still be tempted to give it to a hero level or a BSB, but yeah, you just can't yeah, take yeah. a banner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah, a bit yeah. limited in that way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I think it's an awesome way of giving a easy one up save to a guy on foot. Yeah, totally. Yeah, the thirty yeah. points, I think, it's really good value. Yeah, that is. Um, the next we got the bronze shield for twenty five points. Um, this is a regular six up armor save shield, um, uh, but you can ignore the first hit. Um, suffer during the during the game from either shooting or close combat. Oh, what if that's which... a good little cheap one for? Sorry, I keep going back to this little peg knight, but I like the little captain on a Pegasus just to harass people. I wonder if that's um, if it's oh, going to be first, first hit, not it's first not hit. A, yeah, yeah, first. It'll whatever. ignore the first cannonball aimed at him, so yeah. maybe useful for that. But if the, if your opponent knows he's got it, which he's he will, gonna shoot it. Yeah. he's going to shoot with something else first. Yeah, take it you off. have to ignore yeah. the first. Yes, yeah, the very first hit you can't yeah. choose. Yeah, can't so choose. it's going to be the first hit. Yeah. So you'll take it off, and then, also, although admittedly, you have to shoot with the uh, guess weapons first. Oh, true. Yeah. So, yeah, maybe you put it on your on your peg hero. Maybe yeah. <laughs> twenty five points though. So it's taking up a fair bit of his is, of his magic hero. army yeah. allowance. Um, yeah. And then finally, you got helm of the Skaven Slayer, which is 20, 20 points, and yeah, one of those. Um, specific on, ones, which yeah. is, yeah, army, army yeah, specific yeah. ones, which is nice fluffy ones, but you just, uh, they're just such limited use in, in all comer yeah. lists. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's just a regular shield. Uh, oh, no, it's a helm, sorry. No, it's a six-up armor safe helm. Um, uh, and it just causes fear against Skaven models. Mm. So I guess you could get, that gets you to a three-up or something on, yeah, it's still, you're not going to spend that. You know. could use it for its armor save, yeah. but it's still 20 yeah. points for that one. Yeah, it's pretty save. expensive. It's, a lot, it's, it? it's only 10 more points to get the armor and rhetoric iron. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> and, uh, talismans, yeah. So Shroud of Magnus, 60 points. Uh, it's a five-plus ward. So, uh, yeah, there's a few five-plus. There's a few ward saves in this lot, lot I think. Um, the item gives five-plus ward save. And then it's this other dumb stuff. <laughs> it's, so it's it basically makes the mount, uh, the the model and his mount immune to dark skaven and chaos magic, even if cast with irresistible force. Um, I like how they put that specific caveat in there. Like, yeah. <laughs> so they yeah, even need yeah. to have that. <laughs> yeah. It, again, I mean, again, if you're playing certain people all the time, great. But, you know, um, but yeah, it's not for 60 points. I don't think. Uh, this one's interesting. So Jade Amulet, 50 points model, ignores the first wound it suffers. I looked up my Tomb Kings and I reckon this is equivalent to the Tomb Kings, um, the one that gives you the extra wound. It's only 35 yeah. points. 
Um, so I don't know. I feel like I like the idea of getting an extra wound. It's so it's so useful. Um, but I feel like fifty points is pushing it. Yeah. Um, if that was pointed more like the Tomb King's thirty-five points, I feel like that would be because that's basically what it is, isn't it? Ignoring the first wound basically means you just get yeah. an extra wound. Yeah. I don't know why it's pointed different. It's weird. Yeah. Well, just different, different year. Yeah. Isn't it? Um, it's power creep. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, yeah, probably. And, and the fact is, like, uh, on Tomb Kings, they got a higher toughness on top of it. So you would think it should be flipped the other way around. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. I mean, 50 yeah. points for an extra wound at the opportunity cost of making the character actually more useful for 50 points of other magic items. Yeah. yeah it really yeah. doesn't add up. Yeah. Uh, well, then you got it. the Holy Relic 4 plus ward save, 45 points. So is that pretty. That's pretty on par or there yeah. isn't i'm getting confused with, yeah i think 45 there is no ward is... save huh? is there a ward save in the normal magic items just the six plus is that right yeah there's no four a... up ward save yes yeah, so no, that's pretty that's eighth. common uh, yeah okay yeah so i think i think 45 points is about par yeah. for a four up ward yeah without conditions good. yeah and then you got the cheaper 30 plus which is five plus 30 points for a five plus ward but also immune to Cold base spells and attacks. I hate that stuff because it's like, is that cold? I don't know. What? Yeah. Uh, is that a lightning? Surely lightning could be cold. Yeah. Like uh, it's just it's so what? dumb when you don't have keywords and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, no. Um, I mean, it's a five plus ward save for 30 points. It's an option. I think that you could might maybe use that sometimes. Yeah, that's, I guess, how you look at it. Uh, Sigil of Sigma. Adds one extra dice. I don't mind this. Adds extra dice to all dispel rolls against enemy spells that affect the wear of the unit. Um, that is it. So it depends on what you're doing here. Like if you're building some block and your guys are in some unit, then that potentially might be useful. Yeah. Um, but who knows? They've got to be targeting that unit, I guess. Um, yeah. the Crimson Amulets, 20 going, points. Sorry. Yep. Going back to the um, the cold spell immunity. Yeah. Do you think it would carry over to something like Mistress of the Marsh where it's pretty cold water? Yeah. I, well, this is the, <laughs> this is the dumb thing where they do stuff. And they just go, they give you one example, white dragon's breath, etc. Yep. Yeah. 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 Anyway, sorry. Go on. Yeah, that is funny. Yeah, I could argue that, yes, it's winter yeah, and, yeah. The, and yeah, it's coming it's... out of the, the lake's very cold. So, therefore, it's a cold-based attack. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it, it, Imagine that. It's like you rock up against the Chaos Army and they've done up on snow bases. And you're like, yes. I get that. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I love yeah. it. Yeah. The item uh, gives six plus ward save. Sorry, that's Crimson Amulet, 20 points. Item gives six plus ward save. Uh, automatically passes any character test he has to take except leadership tests. <laughs> so that's where it's yeah, like, right. oh, that's yeah. crap. Um, I don't know. Six plus ward saves are not worth it probably, I don't think. No. Nah. Um, um, Arcane. Yeah, Arcane. Oh, so, so the, was there any useful ones? The, the closest useful ones are the normal four up ward there. Yeah, I reckon that's. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. that's I don't the mind the one. Jade Amulet, but you'd be wasting. Mm, I don't know. No. Depends how defensive you wanted to yeah. make yourself. It's like the White Cloak wasn't that bad either for the yeah, five up. Yeah, yeah. It just depends on how many points you got to suppose. It's really only two. Yeah. Yep. Fair enough. I feel like I feel like a good ward save or a rerollable armor save is more useful than one extra wound because you're yeah, more yeah. likely you know, you're gonna save the wounds. You know, yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. Get to it more yeah. often. A four up ward save essentially doubles your wounds, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um so yeah, arcane items, uh grey one, fifty points. Uh gives plus one casting attempts to made by the wizard. Um, I think that's pretty good on a, yeah, I mean, yeah, if you're going to have a, like a Lord level character and you've got another plus one to casting attempts, yeah. um, he's going to be able to get his magic through, uh, I don't know. I mean, what else are you going to be throwing on a Lord, I suppose, especially if you throw him in a bunker or something like that. And then um, and getting down to, again, these are going to be a bit dependent on the magic law, I'm guessing, like some magic yeah. laws probably are. If there's really low level casting ones, then if you're just getting off on one dice or something, or even two dice, that extra plus one, just yeah, it makes the it's dispeller think about having to throw another dice, basically. Yeah, yeah. You can. Yeah. Well, that's it. I mean, fifty points isn't it's not terrible. Um, 
considering that if you've got like a lord level character you'd be throwing like he's doing a lot of magic so mm. yeah um seal of destruction another 50 points one use only uh the seal has the same effect as a spell scroll in addition roll a d6 on a roll of four plus the spell is removed from the caster's mind and can no longer be cast spells cast from a bound item will be removed on the result of a six yeah um they're pretty good yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I reckon that's pretty good. Uh, like I said, I hate coming up against those destruction ones. Like when, you, especially like Tomb King. Like I'm assuming that would kill the casket, or like stop it casting if you roll to six. Does it? Uh, what about incantations? It would stop. I don't even know how that works against Tomb Kings. Yeah, but that's I suppose on a yeah. That's the problem on a six. Six is what? Mm. Yeah, pretty. Yeah. But yeah, no, no, it's it's, it's a good item. Uh, Rod of Power, 45 points. Um, at the end of the magic phase, uh, you can save up to three dice from your power dice pool and store them in the rod at the beginning of your next magic phase, yours or the enemy's. Roll a dice. If the result is equal or higher to the number of dice stored, um, add them to your pool. If the result is lower than the... Oh, then they're lost. Yeah. But, oh. Uh, 45 points, yeah. It's a little bit much. I, I would like, you know, sometimes you just got those magic phases where nothing's in range. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. It, it's, it's always nice to store dice, but, you know, if, if they're getting lost, um, you know, I, I suppose how many dice are you going to, do you really want to store three and then, you know, it's just useless? I, uh, I would have liked this if it was uh, the other way around, like you store dispel dice to throw, use them as power dice in the next turn because... Yeah. That would have been cool. Yeah, yeah. Definitely would have. Yeah, because 45 points is a little bit expensive for that. Uh, Lucky Stone, one use only. Once per battle, the bearer can reroll one dice used to cast or to spell a spell. Uh, this can effectively cancel a miscast result or an irresistible force um, or a miscast. Or cause yeah, irresistible okay. so force. So basically or it's a just miscast. rerolling it. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. yeah. I, mean, it's, eh, I mean, yeah. It's. I think you'd find people taking that. Yeah, well, that's it. I mean, one use only, but you, you've always got that one. You know, you you wish you could sort of yeah get through <laughs> critical phase. Uh, crystal ball, twenty five points. Um, the enemy must always reveal all the uh, secrets involving all units which are within twelve inches of the wizard at any time. This includes which magic items are in the unit or who is carrying them. The presence of Disguised assassins, the number of fanatics. Um, yeah, it's pretty useless if you play tournament. Yeah, type stuff. you kind of know. You can kind of work out where people are sticking stuff yeah. as well, can't you? Um, wizard staff. I love this next one. Fifteen points, nice and cheap. Um, the wizard staff allows the bearer to use one more dice from the power dice pool than uh, he is normally allowed to when casting a spell. So, a level one wizard can use up to three. Yeah. That is. I think that's that, pretty useful, 15 points, especially if you're going for maybe builds where you're just taking a couple of shitty wizards. Yeah, that's it. I mean, yeah. Because some of the laws, am I right, like they're a bit harder to, like there's some laws that have got higher values, you know, and if you're, if you're stuck taking, like in a 2,000-point list, if you're taking an elect account, because you need leadership. I mean, I'm getting ahead of myself here, but if you, you know what I mean, like yeah. in a certain levels of the Empire Army, you're going to have, level one or level two wizards you're not going to have yeah. lords because you just don't want to risk the shit leadership yeah yeah well that's that yeah that's a that's a good point so um, that's a useful 15 pointer i reckon that is hmm. all right shall we move on to enchanted items yeah let's do it uh first up we got laurels of victory for 70 points. 70 points yeah i uh, know um what it does is each wound caused by a model wearing said laurels will count as two wounds when working at Calmet Res. <laughs> so you don't actually cause double wounds to your victim. Uh, you just each wound you cause is double. I know. Sorry. But then you've used 70 points out of your 100, which so you didn't cause any wounds in the first place because you're attacking yeah, yeah. with... Yeah. yeah. Zero doubled is <laughs> still <Yeah>. zero. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear, uh, I know. Um, then we got Rod of Command, fifty points, one use only. Um, uh, essentially, allows the character and his unit with to automatically pa pass the first break test they have to take. 
um, regardless of modifiers, even if it's auto breaking or anything, they automatically pass it. Mm. There is Again. a caveat that if the player forgets to use it, um, uh. and he, even if he's passed it later on in the game, wants to use it, it's actually considered use because yeah, it's okay. always the first break test you have to roll. Oh. Yeah, so it's the first break test. Even if you passed it, it's used. Yeah, so, it's considered oh, yeah. used. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. yeah, yeah. It'd be amazing if that caveat wasn't there. If you yeah, could choose when to use you could it. Choose when to use yeah, it. Yeah, because fifty points. Oh, yeah, geez. for fifty points, it's it's a lot. I yep. just can't see it being used. Um, next up, we have got Silverhorn, forty-five points. This is a bound spell. I think the next three I'm going through are bound spells. Uh, this one's power level five. Um, uh, and it's a silver horn that when you blow it, all friendly units that are fleeing anywhere on the battlefield will rally immediately. Mm. Mm. 45 I mean, points. Of, <laughs> a lot of points, yeah. And it's sort of assuming that I'm going to have multiple units. Like if I've got multiple units running away. Yeah, you're in a bad spot. Yeah, yeah probably a bad <laughs> yeah. spot. You're not building an army around fleeing troops usually. Yeah. <laughs> uh. um, Next up is Orb of Thunder for 40 points, so a little bit less. This one's power level 4. Um, uh, when the Orb of Thunder spell is in play, no flying creatures on the battlefield can fly and have to move on their ground at the normal movement rate. Yeah, see, this one's um, pretty – I've seen this one pop up. I've, I've, yeah. You know, yeah. A fair yeah. bit. Pretty good. Not great against Pegasus Knights because they can still go 8 inches yeah. on the ground. Yeah, true. Just little factoid there for you. Bretonian yeah. followers, <laughs> um, but yeah, I feel like it's it does definitely has its use because uh, most units are just like movement two or yeah you know, something like yeah, that. Yeah, they fly, yeah. aren't they? Um, the next up, we've got Alfred's Casket of Sorcery for thirty five points. This one's got power level variable because it's a bit of a complicated okay, <laughs> uh, little yeah. measure. So this one is at the end of each of his movement phases, the bearer can automatically remove and capture one randomly determined spell from an enemy wizard in base contact oh. with him. Oh, jeez. Yeah, right. The bearer can cast the captured spell in his own magic phase by releasing it from the casket. The spell is then removed from the game. Oh. No power dice used to cast a spell. Any number of spells can be captured um, and the bearer can cast each once either over several magic phases or all at the same time who prefers um, the power levels of the spell cast by the casket will be equivalent to the score normally need to cast a spell <laughs> so probably so is getting in combat base contact, in contact yeah, yeah, yeah. this wizard. huge <laughs> qualifier I mean, to if, that if you could if you could uh, this is probably op though but if you could choose the spell then that's interesting because it's almost like you could make some type of suicide sort of wizard, like go in, <laughs> yeah. land it against the wizard, grab their most powerful spell, cast yeah. it, and then it's gone and then your guy dies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> take a, a foot of gore or a yeah. comet of Cassandra or something. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, no, if you could choose it, yeah, totally. Or if it wasn't quite based con- like if it was like ceasing well, range or something like that, it'd be yeah. more practical. Because um, yeah. it's, yeah, otherwise it's just really hard to use. Um, or as you say, yeah, if you could know what spell you could take, then it might be worthwhile sacrificing someone to mm. get it. But mm. yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, next one is Icon of Magnus, which are 30 points. Um, this one gives the character and the unit he's with um, immunity to, to fear. Um, uh, and then there's a caveat. If they're faced with something that causes terror, then they only suffer fear and not terror. Yeah. It's a I long way that's... just to say that they've just got fear. They 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 cause fear, but I guess they don't cause fear. They, just they don't cause fear. Yeah. They're just uh, not affected by fear. I, I think it's pretty useful given the type of um, leadership army that Empire are. Yeah. It's potential. Yeah. I think there's yeah some used to it. I don't I don't know where you'd fit it in like yeah. what character. It's you'd probably stick one of the on. ones you'd end up cut first when you're trying to do <laughs> yeah. your army list. Yeah. 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 Pretty much. But I certainly look through this looking for things where it's like, okay, what's going to make me immune to psychology? What's going to make me, you know? Well, that's what you are, immune to psychology. Leadership ones. Um, I guess that's what we're doing more and more the more we play six. Yeah. 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 Um, That is is definitely one of those. Uh, I mean, the thing is, though, if you're putting it, if you're putting whoever's bearing it, if he's in a fairly large unit, he's unlikely to be outnumbered by a fear causing enemy because Empire, you know, typically Mm, their big blocks are quite large. Yeah, um, and that's the main problem, the main fear, so to speak, of you know, fear water breaks. Um, next up, we've got uh, another bounce spell, so Ring of Valance for thirty points, um, one use only. I think I've seen this one 
selected a bit. Yeah. This is where you choose one magic law and then you randomly select a spell from that, that law to be held inside the ring. Yeah. Um, uh, and then it goes off at whatever um, power level the, the spell is. Yeah. It's one use only, if, but... Is that, yeah, is that more use? It sounds, I don't know. Is that more useful in a tournament in the sense that if you're playing five games, chances are you might get one or two of the good spells in that law a couple of times in the tournament. Yeah, right. Like yeah, that, yeah um, and you might be able to choose a different law depending on who you're playing, mm, I guess. You know, yeah. but you still can't choose which spell. No, I know. That's <laughs> what I mean. Like, nah, it's yeah, almost yeah. like I'd, I'd pick the spell. I'd probably start, keep on the law and just be hoping that, you know, I get, yeah, I don't know. It's tough. Mm. Yeah, I feel like it could be really good or, yeah, quite useless. I mean, I guess that's the that's the fun of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, next up, Doomfire Ring for 25 points. Um, and this is just power level three. Um, this gives you a flaming missile that's burst from the ring in a straight line up to 18 inches long and it strikes the first unit in its path. Um, that unit then takes D6 strength three hits. Oh, one um, D6. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, one D six string three hits. Um, I mean, it's the range is a bit shit. Like, yeah, you know, it's yeah. power. Like to be able to fire a free magic missile every turn, is sort of interesting. But it's only eighteen inches. So it's yeah, a it's a straight line. Yeah, yeah, it's a fireball in a straight line with a short range. Yeah, I don't yeah. feel like there's limitations there. Um, but you know, it's twenty five points. It's, it's like a it's fairly but, cheap bounce spell, and yeah. I I think bounce spells are useful. No, I, be, I agree to be too, eating and it's these enchanted. spell dice. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Like, I think especially, yeah. Obviously, it depends on the meta. Like, there's a lot of those. You know, when you when there was a lot of um, elves running around in eights type thing, these are the type of things that's useful to have. You know. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and finally, for the enchanted items, uh, we've got Van Horsem and Speculum yep. for twenty five points. <laughs> great, great item. This is the one um, that's on the peg knight, is it? Ah, no. You could have it to the electric out. I, um, so when the wearer fights a challenge, he can swap his base strength, toughness, initiative, and attack values with his enemy. He has a choice of not using the mirror, but if he does, if he does use it, he must swap all characteristics for the duration of the challenge. Um, you give it to an engineer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 true. Yeah. No, I feel like an electric count's a good one for it because you know. Yeah, but potentially. But I was just thinking, if you put it on the peg guy, he's got more. He can go after that demon prince or like he can get because he yeah, can choose yeah. what combat he gets into yeah um you know yeah, true. whereas uh, but you're right like elect account on cav he can probably pick his battle as well yeah so yeah, absolutely yeah um it almost it does make him a bit more intimidating you know you then, yeah it's only you know, 25 points so it's not yeah if he wants to chuck his big you know of i don't know vampire i think that's actually a better version of the eighth edition one, because the, the eighth one? edition one, it was the same, but I think you had to swatch switch. Oh, uh, right. If I really, you had no choice. Because there was wasn't there the joke that sometimes you'd go after him with like a little goblin hero or something. Oh, <laughs> that would be, surely you. <laughs> can't surely not. Might be wrong that'd be there, ridiculous. <laughs> oh, I have to find it. Anyway, uh, I'll keep going on my ones. If I find it, I'll find it. Um, yeah. So the we got standards. Last standards. Time. Yeah, and then I think we'll um, call this part one by the sound of it, guys, I think. So let's just get through magic standards. So Imperial Banner, um, look, yeah, so he's one of these ones that you're looking for. It's 100 points though. So it's BSB only then effectively. Is yeah. That right? Yep. Uh, all units with at least one model within 12 inches can reroll any failed psychology test as well as test to avoid pursuing and fleeing enemy. So not break tests. Um, but You'll yeah, get the break test from the BSB pricey, anyway. Though. Yeah. It's basically like you've got an eighth edition BSB going. Yeah. 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 <laughs> For a hundred points. <laughs> and you won't be able to say, oh well no, because magic standards they don't come out, out of your allotment, do they? They do. For yeah, points. You, you can't take Oh, you mean for ma- so magic he, he can still take armor and stuff, can't he? Oh you can ma- take armor, but he can't take magic stuff. Not magic armor. Yeah, okay, because I thought the magic banners came under a separate... Uh, oh, they do, but I think there's lot. that rule that if the BSB is a magic banner, he can't take other magic items. Ah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. Oh, Which would leave yeah. him pretty vulnerable. Yeah, that's... Uh, I yeah. mean, he can get a decent save, sort of. I mean, so, yeah, I don't know. It just seems a little pricey for me. If that was like 70 yeah. or something, or I'd be like... Eh. Or, You'd have played armor, like, and that's about it, isn't yeah. it? Like, yeah, yeah. can't take a shield, yeah. Can't take a shield. Yeah. 
two weeks. What about if you put him on a night, like if he's on in a unit of troops, uh, but um, like sorry, knights. Um, I guess. But then you, you might as well just spend money the, uh, on the grand mas- marshal dude to make him immune to psychology yeah. anyway. But then that's within 12 inches. I don't know. Yeah, you got to be, you know, you feel like you want him to be in the center of your front line. Like, I guess a full knight army. Benefit. Think about a knight army with BSB with that. So one up armor save, 12 inches. You've got also got your uh, grand, your elector count in there. Or sorry, your grand marshal as well. Or your elector counts so leadership, you know, nine or 10 in another yep. unit of knights. Like if you've made a couple of units of knights and yeah. they were, going together um, but the thing mm. is the night units are you know they're base leadership's better anyway i feel yeah, like you I need know. it for the leadership seven um yeah infantry. that's true that's really yeah. going to benefit from it um, um and yeah you, you need me psychology with the grandmaster anyway for that unit yeah 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 it's a better in the little msu units where you got a lot of those little ones and mm. you're sitting back there yeah i don't know it's just a lot it's an expensive banner yeah it is yeah uh, then Banner of Sigismund, 60 points, unit stubborn. I can, I mean, I can see that one, but again, yeah. that's got to be a BSV. Yeah, it's getting its BSV, yeah. But yeah, yeah. I think that's more but plausible. Like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that's good. A second summer block next to the Great yes, Swords. Yes, Great Swords. Totally yeah. worthwhile. Yeah. Uh, Banner of Ulrich, Knights of the White Wolf only. Uh, so basically you've got to take a leadership test if you're charged by them. If the test is passed, the unit confines normally. So it's basically like a... It's like a fear test, is it? If the unit fails the test, must roll sixes. Yeah, it's like a fear test without <laughs> causing fear. <laughs> That's, they yeah. write all these things. Oh, God. Uh, okay. If the unit wishes to cha- charge knights, carrying this banner must take a look. Yes. Yeah, so it's a unit fear. Normally not affected by fear is immune to the effects. So you might as well just say, for the purposes of charging or being charged, it's counted as causing fear. It's like it's like everything you said. They can't do auto brakes, pretty much. Yeah, you know? it's the only thing yeah, they can't yeah. do. Oh god. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I mean, maybe if you're taking a lot of white wolves, but no, I don't know. Uh, the next one's an auto include, which is the Griffin Standard, fifty points, doubling your rank bonus. Effectively, yeah. is that right? Yeah. 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 Up to, Excellent. Obviously, up to plus six. Yeah. Um, but you just can't pursue. No. But that's okay. That's okay because your detachments can pursue. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask. Well, that's literally what I was just thinking. Is that true? Like if you yeah. don't pursue your detachment can? Yeah, well, that's yeah, totally worth it. Yeah, yep, absolutely. I like that one. So that one's definitely one that sits next to your greatsword unit. Yeah, I feel like or you, you can go put it in your greatsword unit. I one block of greatswords and then one block of this, like a big yeah. block of swordsmen with this. Yeah. Because it's very hard to lose combat. You know, it doesn't matter if you're not stubborn because if you've got a base combat res of like eight, yeah. Well, that's what's not that, I mean, I would do it with swordsmen. I just don't have any, but that's what I was going to do with my first empire game is just use my spearmen though, but a big block of them. So you're never going to use there. At least you might attack a little bit back to make up for your crap save. Yeah. And then, I think, and then yeah. you've I think got your plus yeah. six for your, you know, put them in four by six or four by seven, you know. Yeah, I think that's um, definitely, I don't think you lose that much by going to spearmen over yeah. swordsmen to be quite yeah. honest. So, and if you do that, then you've got the, um, I mean, we'll talk about strategy anyway in another time. Um, but yeah, no, that's I love that one, Griffin Stan. Yeah, yeah, let's, yeah, let's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's keep going. <laughs> yeah, Banner of Valor, immune to panic, uh, 40 points. I mean, yeah, but 40, what can you put that on there? Who would need to, you're sort of running out of units that even take magic banners yeah. at that point, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, no, there's not many that can. Because is it only one state troop if you're ter- if you've got an elector count as a general, then one you of your can, state troops can. That's right. Yeah. Um, and your great swords can. Yep. But that's it. Oh no, no, Maybe you're the not. Nice. And the knights. Yeah. yeah. It's only panic, isn't it? It's not immune. Yeah, yeah. No, it's yeah. just no. panic. Yeah. yeah. For forty just, points, that's yeah. And then Banner of Warding, the banner gives two extra dis, uh, extra dice to all dispel rolls against enemy cells, which would affect this unit, 40 points. I mean, that seems a lot more useful than the other one we are looking at, which just gave you the one. I don't know what the point difference is there. Um, again, it depends on the type of army build, I guess. If you are, I've got some sort of, I just don't, I don't, maybe if you've got this big block of yeah, uh, great swords that you've got all your stuff in, you just don't want, like, you know. Yeah. I don't know, Pit of Shades is a thing in, I don't know, you know, like one of these big, you know, spells Killer taking out your big yeah. unit. I don't know. Mm. 
two extra dollars. Um, or like if you've gone magic light, you know, and so you're just picking a few of these things to help the core units that you just don't want to hurt. Like I wonder if that's better on knights because they're operating, you've got a unit of 10 going up doing something and then because they're more mobile, they're more, they're going to get attacked by spells or shooting generally and this is helping them not not get as much magic at them potentially. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, knight and then steel standard, this one, this one's good. This is adds D3 to its charge move. Uh, otherwise, they just do seven. Um, 25 points to get an extra plus D3. That's a, uh, I, I, I don't I think that's, Especially in a, you know, in a guessing range game, that's pretty useful. Yeah, I feel like it's cheap enough to be worthwhile just throwing in if you've got the spare points. Yeah. Yeah. And it's For a 14 extra charge one. range, yeah, it's not, yeah. it's not super long. Well, yeah. Yeah, it changes you to fifteen to seventeen inches, which is a yeah, yeah. you know, it's a big, big improvement. Yeah. yeah, and especially it's critical. Usually, those type of charges are bloody critical. Like if you get mm. it, yeah, you've, you've done some. You've definitely thrown the yeah, the other players' uh, battle plans out. Yeah. Um. Now, yeah, banner of duty ten points again. It's one of these ones where it's only helping. <laughs> Reroll failed rallying tests. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not only are they already fleeing, they have to fail the rally test to yeah. re-roll it. Is that right? <laughs> so this is this oh, well, item's planned totally. around this item's planned around not only running away troops, but the ones that you failed to rally. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, it's ten points, but geez, I reckon you'd forget to use it. If you if you got that one anyway cool yeah well obviously griffin standard is a easy steel standard yeah um yep. then maybe couple, maybe some of the others but you probably run out of slots cool yeah. um hey we've gone oh this is uh, uh, i'm starting to learn a bit about the empire here. i think it's a good way to get through the army books but yes. i think we're right i think we'll do this as a two-parter guys what do you think and we'll yep. next episode we'll um we'll probably skip the Next week's episode, we'll probably skip the um, hobby time and all that and just go straight into going through the actual, what we would class as the army, like going through the actual points costs and what you get in the different slots as well as how we would probably you know, yeah. take some yeah. armies. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then probably cover some of the different variants because there's a fair few battle of the uh, back of the book lists as well. Um and a couple of special characters and then probably just, yeah, just sort of wrap up with how magic aligns with that, sort of get more into the gameplay and how you might, you know, structure yeah. the army. I think a little bit more of a we've laid the groundwork and now we let's chat about how you'd actually play them type thing. Yep. Does that sound good? Yep. That sounds great. Awesome. Okay. Well, we've probably kept everyone long enough. Um, hopefully you guys will tune in for part two of our Empire Book Review or Empire Army Book 6th Edition Review. Um, anything you guys want to close out on before we close our show out? No. It was good. No, I'm sure. pretty good. Awesome. No worries. Well, I'll let you guys get going. Thanks for uh, listening, day. guys. Uh, we'll, you know, do the usual that stuff that we like, which is uh, share and give us feedback and give us five-star ratings if you can. We really appreciate Ooh. that stuff. Um, I think we're over 700 and probably close to 800 downloads on now, which is yeah. cool, and 25 countries. So that's pretty cool. So people must like listening to us for some reason. But hopefully we're, <laughs> hopefully, uh, hopefully, people uh, enjoy listening to us while, we, while they're painting and stuff. So, look, hit us up, guys, on oldworldfanatics at gmail.com and at Old World Fanatics on all the socials. And, yeah, we'd like to hear from you and just, yeah, some feedback on our first Army Book Review. Obviously, we haven't finished it. It's only part one. But, um, you know, if you've got, you know, some suggestions for how you'd build an empire list, send it in and maybe you'll squeeze it in before we uh, do part two, which should be coming next week as well. So thanks, guys. And, yeah, Josh, Andrew, thanks for staying up and I'll chat to you uh, next time. Yep, sounds Hello. good. Thanks, guys. Cheers, guys. Yeah. Ciao. Yeah. Is that what we're going to do? Yeah. yeah.
yeah, and maybe cool. not Babylon because I think the problem was obviously with this is we were probably talking about hobby time went for probably fucking. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So I think we'll that's have... forty five minutes of hobby yeah. time. <laughs> no, and that's fine. But that's what people hear. It's all good. Yeah, no, totally. As long as you guys don't mind doing another recording. <laughs>